Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode, we're going to be continuing our Batman team up set review as we go into the super rares, chases, legacy cards, and I assume tie a little bit about team up cards as well. Episode 446. Number 60 Ranch and co host Calder Ness. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do Six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Your Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure to check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Let's jump right into the Super Rares. Yes. Yay. And we get to talk about lanterns, Simeon. Yeah. Into the Super Rares, into the lanterns. We lantern kind of talked about a lantern, but um, I, I mean, the yeah. actual I actual lanterns this time. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're starting off strong with Jon Stewart. He's on his knees. He's crying out. He says, uh... Black Day, Darkest Night, uh, no hero clicks shall escape my sight. And he's like shooting a chest spear out of his Pretty chest. Interesting. Like oh. Iron Man Unibeam yeah. laser into the sky. Uh, very strange sculpt, but it is it is a cool sculpt. It's a unique sculpt. It's probably from a um, comic or comic cover that I just haven't seen. Future State, Green Lantern number one, 2021, is the significant appearance. But this is Jon Stewart, Green Lantern Corps, Justice League, Herald and Soldier keywords. And Brightest Day is his trait. Willpower, when Jon Stewart uses it and succeeds, he takes a maximum of two damage from attacks until your next turn. Uh, as you may have known, Green Lantern uh, Ring, which he gets to use the, like, the effect for free uh, to generate the constructs. It also says Willpower, if they can already use oil power then increase the result by plus one so he has a 50 50 to not only remove action tokens but also take a max of two damage and that is not something that can be outwitted i guess willpower technically can be but if he already succeeds then that's not you can't outwit retroactively willpower because he already succeeded um he has a special defense power from clicks one through five and that is barrier and vulnerability barrier as free but only to generate two markers he has two point lines 75 and 50 uh 75 point line goes from click one through three and then his 50 point line starts on click four so on click one he has a seven range one lightning bolt he has a running shot precision strike special defense power with 18 defense three damage with uh that enhancement so yeah he's He's got barrier invuln. I really like this top dial because you can run in shot, barrier as free, make two markers, protect him. Um, and then, yeah, you've got invulnerability. You potentially have that willpower, take a max from two anyhow kind of thing. He does have the Green Lantern team ability as well as the Justice League team ability. And then um, on click three, the last of his top dial, he has charge blades, that special defense power, and perplex. So he can make himself a 12 or a 19 defense. And then if you play him at 50 points, he's a very economical and sealed, especially. Uh, obviously, most super rares are good and sealed. But uh, 10 speed with charge, 10 attack blades, 17 defense with that barrier power, and 3 damage with perplex. So you can make yourself an 11 or give yourself an 18 defense. Uh, he has the same kind of stuff going on on click 5 with an 8 speed but still charge blades, uh, special barrier uh, defense, and then three damage perplex. And then on his last three clicks, he goes back to running shot, picks up some psychic blast, uh, picks up some willpower. So not only does he have willpower traded, but that's right. It's a d d d double willpower. Uh, he has it traded and on his last three clicks. How cool is that? You only get to use one instance, you fool. So <laughs> yeah, Good luck with whatever that is. Uh, the click six, he has uh, so he's got range combat expert on those last three clicks as well. But on click six, he's got three damage, so he's a twelve for four when he uses psycho blast. When he uses running shot, anything in between seven range. Um, 
It goes down to a 2 damage on clicks 7 and 8, but he's still a 12 for 3 on both of those with 6 speed instead of 8 speed. So yeah, he's a very effective dial no matter which part you put him on. Uh, at least, I will say this, at least if his willpower isn't outwitted, there's a good chance that if you equip him in constructed, probably not in sealed, but in constructed, if you equip him with the green lantern ring, good chance that he'll take a max of two, which is better than reducing by two. Because like even if they do like 1,700 penetrating damage, you're still taking a max of two. So pretty cool. I think I, I really like that trait. I like this John Stewart. Uh, is he the best super rare Green Lantern we've had? No. I like the How Jordan uh, definitely, from Wonder Woman. Better. Yeah, sadly, um, definitely not. Yeah, but I mean, he, he can still generate the uh, the glove. He can generate, you know, all the new constructs as well. Uh, he'll right. be able to generate them for free because he has the keyword. Um, but I will say, just like longevity wise for similar points, I think that. What is that, Hal? He's. He's also 75 and 50. 75 with two stop clicks. <laughs> two stop clicks, 19 <laughs> yeah. defense. So he's yeah. a little better. I don't know. He's just a, touch, a little bit just better. Just a touch. Yeah. Uh, but no, this. It's On, a cool you're take. still good. You're still a good Green Lantern, John. But just Hal Jordan is better. Well, hey, what can we say? I mean, it's almost like he's the first. I mean, he's no Alan like Scott. He's the first. He's, he's pretty he's good at. Yeah. Of, he's, Alan he's, Scott wasn't like a green lantern green no, lantern you know like so. magic lantern yeah happened to be green funny funny railroad lantern man you know like <laughs> uh <laughs> next up the antithesis i guess of the green lantern core the main enemy is the yellow lantern core so we have sinestro he has injustice league legion of doom sinestro cores herald and ruler probably gonna play him on an injustice league or legion of doom or herald cosmic ruler theme team because sinestro core is a tough keyword to play much in some would say it's almost impossible, impossible to build a 300 point team but he's not unique so if you want to play just a bunch of sinestros you can do that you could play four sinestros and there's there's a 300 point sinestro core team if you want to because he's got a 125 point line and a 75 point line he has a trait a special attack power and a special damage power he has flight six range two targets and the injustice league team ability pretty fun Attack roll of 10 or 12, you had to remove an action token from him. Maybe he can just keep on doing stuff. He has Running Shot Invincible, his special attack power for the first four clicks. Really nice, because click four is the starting line of his 75 point. He is outwit on his first two clicks, and then he has his special damage power from click three to six, and then it shows up again real sneaky-like on click nine, which is cool. So he goes on to charge after he loses Running Shot, and then he goes on to two clicks of Flurry at the end of his dial. When he begins charge, he gets two clicks of Precision Strike, and then the last three clicks are Blades, Claws, Fangs. After he loses Invincible, he instantly gets three clicks of Invulnerability, and then he goes down to Combat Reflexes. And then in that weird little gap there on clicks seven and eight between his special uh, damage power, he gets two more clicks of Outwit, like his first two clicks, so that's really fun. His trait is In Blackest Night. Perplex, when Sinestro uses it, he may negatively modify damage values. As we know, Perplex changed a little over two years ago, uh, or not quite two years ago, and now he can do so to specifically negatively uh, modify damage value. He could do this on a friendly person if he wanted to for whatever reason, but why would you? But he can. He can now modify damage values. Only negatively, though, so that's kind of cool, so I like that. That's strong in this post Perplex yep. can only modify anything but damage values. So that's and, really yeah, good. And a harder environment to increase damage values. Oh, Having very true. Easy yes. way to negatively modify them is pretty cool. He has a special attack power, like I said, first four clicks, is knockback, pulse wave, but each hit opposing character is dealt two damage instead of once. He's got a flat two damage pulse wave. Really nice, really gnarly. The 12 attack top dial is great. The 25 point line with an 11 attack is also solid. The pulse wave where he does two damage to everybody, really good. And then he has lead through fear. This is his special damage power, which is leadership and outwit. So if you want him to start with leadership, you're going to have to have him at the 75 point line. It's interesting not having this at the 125 point line, I guess, but beggars, uh, I suppose, can't be choosers. Can't get everything you want. This is a very range heavy one, but then he does, have, I guess he ends up having more clicks of close combat focused with the five clicks down dial because his sculpt is like him holding these two like big like sword type things. 
Uh, but his his pulse wave is definitely what you're playing him for. The big two damage pulse wave yeah. with knockback. Man, I can't wait to see the new rot knockback rules in Beyond Amazing to see what all it's gonna do for knockback damage. Because given a lot of people with pulse wave, yeah, knockback <laughs> as well. Several, you several know, pulse wave knockback characters. Yeah, which so is it's uh, interesting. You know, PTSD of a uh, Danger Room Magneto. Oh, big big PTSD Danger Room Magneto. That was that was tough. Yeah, yeah, he's a solid Sinestro. He's nothing crazy. He's not super wild. But uh, again, two damage pulse wave is just really solid. That perplex being able to modify negatively damage values is also really solid. And of course, you can just use it as normal perplex too. You want to make him a 13 attack to yeah. really mess up people? You can make him yeah, a 19 defense. Absolutely. Perplex, period. And then when he uses it, yeah. he may uh, negative do that. Yeah. So, so solid Sinestro. Really cool. I, I'm excited to play him on like a Legion of Doom. Injustice yeah. League game for sure. He's one of the super rares I really want. Um, and there's a lot because uh, most of the lanterns are super rares. Next up is plain old Batman. It's uh, Bruce Wayne, Batman Family, Gotham City, Justice League, Detective, Martial Artist, uh, 60 points, only point line. Um, he's got the Batman Ally team ability. He has a special speed power for his first four clicks, a special damage power, his whole dial first four clicks of that special speed power he also has precision strike with 11 attacks and then he also has toughness for those first four clicks uh that goes 18 17 17 18 last three clicks he has charge with steel energy 10 attack steel energy uh he goes to combat reflexes with 17s on the clicks five and six and then 18 on his last click Again, coupled with that uh, special damage power. So it is interesting that he's got... Uh, I Ignore Mine is the name of Steel Energy. Um, I will reference the one that, the lead up to that power. But that is the name of his Steel Energy that lets him heal up. You don't see a lot of Batman characters that have some sort of like regen, Steel Energy, uh, whatever. But um, yeah, so that top dial... Uh, so again, he, he has uh, improved movement... Elevated and opposing characters, five range, two lightning bolts. That top dial, first four clicks, he has speed power. That is, he does this thing with shadows. Charge. At the beginning of your turn, Ooh, you may oh. place Batman in a square of hindering within range and line of fire. So that's five squares. Uh, any any five squares that are within line of fire, not hidden. Uh, he can see that. He can be placed at. That basically gives him an extra, I mean top dial that gives him a full speed charge because he can be placed five squares away and then charge five squares so yeah it's a little bit more wonky than a full speed charge but it also is like i could charge up and then be placed oh it's at the end of my turn yeah not at the beginning so yeah you can kind of use it as a wonky full speed charge but mostly as like a getaway after you've charged kind of thing uh, and then that special damage power he has his full dial is empower outwit and perplex so Perplex up defense, uh, empower other people adjacent to him, outwit opposing characters, got all the kinds of stuff. He's a very just Batman-y Batman. He's not particularly special. Um, obviously, he's more unique and more interesting than like a common or uncommon, but I don't really see like super rare kind of flair on him. Uh, he is just like good, like just good for the sake of being good, I guess, but... He is just like a very, this is Batman kind of dial, <laughs> like nothing very special, which is maybe just for the shock value that like the prime gives him. I don't know. That, mm. He doesn't even, yeah. he can't even be equipped I mean, with the, he doesn't even start with the utility belt. Yeah, he doesn't he even doesn't, get it. It's kind of weird now that you think about it. I guess you don't, we, they don't do traits that, uh, like he can just always be, like anyone can just start with like. A that ring is true. Like, you're yeah. right. Yeah, with how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Never mind. Everyone yeah. just needed the weird caveat. It's just it's that way of thinking we have to get into the way life is now. New Batman uh, and all that stuff. Equipment rules. Ugh. But it's a solid Batman. It's a cool. We talking about like worlds, right? Like it was. It's a solid Batman. He's nothing insanely crazy, but. It fits it works for how batman should work i think and it's just a really solid six point line next up green lantern bats look at him he's like like that one but he's green instead now it's pretty neat 
Batman Family, Gotham City, Green Lantern Corps, Justice League, Cosmic Detective, and Herald. 100 point line, 25 point line. He's got the Green Lantern team ability, which lets him have Passenger 8. He has the Batman Ally team ability. He has 7 range, 1 target, and he has the Flight ability. He's only special combat symbol. He's got the trait, which is in the Darkest Night. He can have both the Utility Belt and the Green Lantern Ring equipped, assigned, and equipped at the same time. That's cool. He has a special attack power that goes throughout his entire dial, Smoke Cloud. Smoke Cloud is free, but only to generate one marker. Opposing characters occupying or adjacent to Batman, Smoke Cloud cannot use improved uh, movement abilities and must break away as if they were adjacent to Batman. It's really good. Seven range, you can toss out a Smoke Cloud, and then boom, you've got to try to move away from Batman. You know, if you want to, you know, if you want to say skip, I forget now what the utility belt does. We saw it earlier this week. Probably should have pulled it up when talking about this yeah. stuff, but I didn't. It's a... Um, he does some stuff. He can choose all sorts of different it's powers like and abilities. The, yeah, it's like the alchemical it. potion, but it gives you... I don't... Uh, I don't remember if it has plasticity, but you could always give this Batman I think Book of Levitation. Does. does it? Okay, so the belt has plasticity. Um, That's really solid. Here, I'll, I'll then it's like off real quick here. Okay, sick. Perfect. Um, Thank you, sir. Utility belt, 10 points. Uh, so it has... Um, it has six different little unique icons. One is smoke grenades... Uh, so that's smoke cloud. Smoke cloud is free. One is handcuffs. That's incapacitate plasticity. Grapnel gun is force blast slash leap climb. Uh, Batarang is range combat expert. Minimum range value of four. This disguise kit is improved movement, ignores characters, and shape change. And then the first aid kit is regen and support, which all of these seem really powerful. Obviously, I think disguise kit is like stupid good and then uh the battering range combat expert is stupid good um in cap plasticity is pretty okay smoke cloud and smoke cloud is free on any kind of batman is good uh then it has um so the way that you use it is similar to the alchemical potion or i should say the errated alchemical potion slash fire so it's free roll a d6 turn the utility belt clockwise you start with the arrow indicated pointing at the image of your choice, but then free, roll a d6, turn the utility belt clockwise a number of times equal to the result. If this character has the uh, Batman family keyword, turn it any number up to the result. So if you roll a six, it could be anywhere in between or, you know, whatever. Um, this character can use the listed effect, if any, until your next turn. So it only lasts until your next turn when you like change okay. it but yeah that's the big thing you have to keep rolling every turn you can't just you can't just leave it on one of them and just like you know that's what it, i have for the whole game kind of thing but yeah imagine right this guy yeah basically with the ability to smoke cloud his whole dial uh ignore characters or have uh rce and that's that's what it mostly adds to this specific batman i think right yeah, so jumping back into it, for his first five clicks, is a special defense power, which is I am power. Invincible willpower. When Batman uses willpower and succeeds, after resolutions, modify his combat values plus one until your next turn. So as we know with the Green Lantern ring, it's a 50-50 willpower. So he might just have just plus one combat values all the time if you roll the I willpower mean, really well. Yeah. It's a good chance that it's not outside be, the realm. Like, yeah. I mean, I can't say more often than not, but yeah, it's 50% of the time. Like, statistically, you know, it should be 50% of the time. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah, 50-50. And, you know, and what are his stats that whole time? That are going to get, yeah, also, yeah, and he's just going to keep going. So it's really solid. He's a really solid prime. As running shot, his first five clicks, like I said, that defense power, like I said, that attack power. It's outwit for two clicks, perplex for two clicks, outwit for another two clicks, and then perplex on his last click. He is a 10, 12, 18, 4 top dial, which could easily be an 11, 13, 18 for five with eight range like he's really good i think he's a great sealed pull uh 100 points is awesome the 25 point line this is his supporty he's got phasing uh instead of running shot he still has that special attack power with the whole smoke cloud thing which is really solid he has barrier and then he starts with outwit i could see him being played on some teams it's just him being a prime is a tough sell i'd say this is really meta but him being a prime means you're not doing Destroyer, you're not doing Mad Jim, 
you're not doing U.S. agent, obviously, best prime in the game. But like right. again, the prime slot that's that's just a tough contention right now for prime I, slot. Yeah, and I highly doubt that his 25 point line is worth taking up the prime slot. Like that's what I even think. coming in with the you utility know? belt and Green Lantern ring. I just highly doubt that that 25 point line. It's like so what he's gonna like phase up, drop a construct, uh, free smoke cloud, and like one of his other like free things like have shape change or something. Um, sure. I just really, really don't think that for 25 points that's adding enough to most. Teams. I don't think so. I really don't think so. And really, his keywords just aren't there. Like so, no. it's unthemed. If if I'm unthemed and I'm adding a prime, I mean, there's a lot of primes to nice. choose from. Like just a lot. I could maybe see him be like cosmic. I think obviously on like a herald team for like a fun casual night. This dude's awesome. He's a great and out and the lantern herald theme team type deal. Yeah, maybe even and in like, like a yeah. silver herald with a good old. Oh, Exodus I could see that. Yeah, yeah Exodus, that could be helpful. You know, actually giving out that boring improved movement and actually mess with people. You know, helps Exodus go a little further too. So that, that's cool. But yeah. That's Batman. He is really solid. I do really like him. Don't think he's really playable at 25. Not taking up the prime slot. Sorry. No. Sorry, guys. But, yeah, uh, he is really awesome. awesome. He is still really freaking awesome. You know, 13 yeah. for 5, top dial, you know, hitting willpower. At 100 points, you have to consider that, like, the the other 100-point primes, like, um, well, Destroyer's not really a 100-point prime. He's 8. Right, line. no. He's... But, no, there's, like, Emperor Gladiator, who, for 100 oh, points. Oh, true, yeah. Kind of just sort of a bit more of a punch. this Batman around, like maybe not, but like kind of just depends on which one hits and which one doesn't, I guess. Um, but yeah, he is like a super good prime, though. Like, as far as like super rare primes go, he's like one of the more interesting and like casually just nuts, absolutely nuts, absolutely. Uh, next up, we've got uh, one of the Jedi Council members, I can't remember his name, big old forehead guy. Uh, oh, yeah. Is- Oh yeah, that's right. Brody Ness. Um Blue Lantern. Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Brody Walker. That's his name. There you go. There uh, you go. Blue Lantern Core Cosmic Herald. No one except me and you understand that. But yeah, um, it's literally just a joke for you and I. Oh well. <laughs> literally it. Uh Blue Lantern Core. Uh he's yeah, this is all Saint Walker. He's he's got the Blue Lantern Core keyword. He's probably I think actually no, I'm almost positive he's the only blue lantern core in this set um he has in fearful day is his one trait which is in power when saint walker uses it he may treat other friendly characters within range and line of fire as adjacent which is nutso uh five range uh and line of fire as adjacent for empower pretty solid even more solid that um he has a 30 point line that he can do that with. <laughs> uh, so then, yeah, his second trait is all will be well. Attack rolls of 11 made by friendly characters within range are critical hits. It only increases your critical hits by a small margin. But, you know, instead of needing a 6-6, six, six, you can now roll a 5-6 or a 6-5. So, you know, technically increasing the odds. Uh, if St. Walker is 60 points, attack rolls of 10 made by friendly characters within range are critical hits. Now, that's quite a few more options for rolls that can be made. Uh, five fives included, four sixes, and six fours included. So, yeah. Um, still, like, after playing a lot of... Oh, what What's the name of that? Thor's Axe from the Jarn Mighty Bjorn? Thor. Yeah, Jarn Jorn or whatever. Yeah. After playing a lot of that, which had like the same effect. Uh, I came to realize that I just don't roll much higher than nines, like ever, especially not when I want to or with characters I want to. But yeah, this is like map wide. It's just friendly attack rolls or attack rolls made by friendly characters uh, within range, I guess. So it's not map wide. It's five range, but it doesn't have to be within line of fire. I guess is what I was getting at. Um, top dial. He has enhancement and perplex. For the first four clicks, so for 60 points, you get five range, one lightning bolt, eight speed running shot with flight. Uh, you have precision strike with two clicks of an 11 attack, two clicks of 10 attack, 18 defense with super senses for the first three clicks, down to a 17 defense with 
uh, super senses on click four, and then that special def or special damage power, which is enhancement perplex for those first four clicks, with uh, three clicks of three damage, and then down to two damage on click four. Uh, for thirty points, you get three clicks of force blast with seven speed down to a six speed on click seven. TK with ten attack down to a nine attack on click seven. Uh, ESD with a 17 defense down to a 16 on click 7 and then uh, enhancement that is just 2 damage for all 3 clicks uh, the 30 point line I think is really solid those 2 traits are really good and when you add them in with the 30 points yeah I think using empower within 5 range and line of fire empowering everybody that he can see pretty solid um, good yeah I think you know obviously increasing the critical attack rolls just to an 11 isn't going to be game changing but it's pretty solid and then at 60 points yeah like he has attacking potential whereas you know at 30 points he's mostly just those two traits and then also like hey uh tk you know he does yeah. also he's got enhancement and the ability to carry somebody f for sure uh but yeah he's he's uh he's doing the whole blue lantern core thing he's just boosting friendly characters and that's uh it's pretty cool i yeah. i definitely wouldn't play him at 60 that's just personally like where i'm at i think in sealed uh if he's my best character at 60 points i may be pulled real bad but at least uh his whole dial he has enhancement and empower so no matter which point value you're playing him at he's boosting adjacent friendly characters uh damage values so there is that yeah. Sam Walker is nothing if not a team player, and I really dig that. I, I really do like this 30-point line. Honestly, the Lanterns as a team, just random Spectrum Lanterns put together on a Herald team, is going to be really boosted by this 30-point line. It's really Absolutely, nice, actually. Yeah. I like it a lot. Um, 60, you know, this whole attack roll of 10 at least means I might play him with like 40 cakes Lex oh, at sure. 60 in like silver for like a fun, you know, time throwing out critical hits all over the place that that can be kind of cool but even then that takes a little bit of ramping but that'd probably be the only time i play him at 60 over over 30 economic wise you know right yet the man himself larflees the, the dude who's super greedy super orange orange lantern core cosmic herald and ooh the monster keyword he is one of the few lanterns to get the cosmic energy team ability which is pretty cool he's got two traits special defense power and a special speed power he has two starting lines one big beefy 175 point line and then a hundred point line this is a the interesting larf least he's got plasticity opposing characters within range can't automatically break away his range is six and he has two bolts in case you wanted to know that's pretty cool uh, i do like the plasticity i do like it on him i like that it's anybody within range again you're not making an orange lantern core uh, team, unless you get like three of this dude at a hundred, you know, <laughs> so like that's kind of where we're at. I was hoping we'd get an orange Lex, alas, not in the no dice, not in the cards for the set. His second trait is not yours. Larflees can be equipped with any number of equipment at the same time. Now, remember what we said earlier, though, they can only ever be assigned automatically at the start of the game with one equipment per person. Later on, he can equip more, absolutely. But uh, he cannot be equipped at the start of the game assigned during force construction with more than one. That's the rules. That's how they work. Uh, when a non-standard character within range line of fire is KO'd, after resolutions, you may roll a d6 and heal Larflees equal to half the result. Kind of rough when it's non-standard, but I guess, you know, there are bystanders and other characters that can be KO'd that will let Larflees heal, which is cool. Uh, I like the idea that if you kill a construct... Uh, or a construct of his dies, he'll heal from it, which is kind of cool. However, it doesn't in range and line of fire, and sadly his range, I believe, which is six, is the same as how far you can be away from a construct to kill it. So you can't, like, just move your construct away from Larflees to die, because it does have to be within his range and line of fire, which, based on construct rules, they, w they won't die then, which is kind of sad. Kind of not, I guess, but it's a neat idea. Yeah. He has a special speed power for his first five clicks, uh, just to get into the dial, special speed for the first five, charge for the next three, hypersonic for the last three, 11 click dial, poison first two clicks, and steal energy for the next two, and then poison again for another four, and then his last three clicks, he gets steal energy again. 
He has a 19 Invincible for his first two clicks, then a 19 Special on the next two, Invulnerability with an 18 on his next two clicks after that, which will be the start of his 100-point line. Special Defense with a 17, and then last two clicks, he's got 18 Defense Toughness. He has Perplex his entire dial, except for his last three clicks, where he has Battle Fear. Really getting DO'd. Uh, so yeah, his special speed power, which, like I said, as for their first five clicks, it's a 10 uh, starting, and then it's an 8 on his 100-point line, which is charge, mind control, and mind control as free, but only to target non-standard opposing characters. Again, really interesting with all the non-standard stuff that he has. I don't, I guess, totally get it. Uh, I haven't really read any comics with Larflees in them, so I don't really know too much about the character, but it's it's an interesting thing. Not a lot of stuff is for non-standard characters only, so that's kind of cool. And then his defense power, like I said, is scattered throughout, is barrier impervious, barrier as free, but only to generate two markers. So, again, the tough thing about Larflees being, like, 175 is kind of the same thing about that Wonder Woman, except, like, he doesn't have the rollouts, he doesn't have the E... Um, Asticity stuff is cool. He has ways to heal, which is nice, between the steel energy and then his other trait. Uh, like I said, not being able to pop that off um, by controlling it yourself with your own constructs is a little rough uh, to guarantee some healing that way. There's not a ton of non-standard characters, but there's bystanders and whatnot yeah. throughout. So it's... There's a lot of... Uh, well, not a lot, but there there are like... I think yeah. specifically in this set or like around this set, um, you'll be able to kill a lot of like opposing constructs and you'll right be able exactly to kill like a lot of like opposing like bystanders and stuff. Um, Which works well with his works, two bolts. He actually works stupid well with uh, that Aquaman, where if like the tentacles aren't. Oh in yeah, water, you're right. Uh, there's not like an True. easy way to get them out of water, but if you can. Like, I mean, just have Larflees carry one out of water or something. I don't yeah, know, exactly. Whatever. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he definitely needs the protected outwit. That I really like. He definitely needs the willpower for being for much sure. of your, your build. Well, I do like that. It's just, I don't know. There's something about Larflees being only Orange Lantern that I feel like he should just be a little more powerful than he actually is. Um, yeah, it's still a solid dial. It's still really cool. It does just, I guess, kind of seem underwhelming, I guess. Yeah, I don't know enough about Larflees to say like what I would have done differently, but I will say, um, just based on the War of Light version where he made uh, the like lantern recruit constructs or whatever they were. Right. Yeah, that was really cool. Uh, if if I was gonna have like give him something to like build up the Orange Lantern army on his own, I would have given him something like um, Machine Smith. Oh like, sure, yeah, yeah. Where he makes that bystander. Yeah, where else. Be like, would, yeah, that'd be cool. He can make a bystander at the hundred point line. He can make a bystander of like a character that's up to a hundred points or whatever. Like shares their like top dial or whatever. So, you know, whatever that machine smith wording was at one hundred seventy five points. It'd be like max two of a character up to a hundred points, and then it would be like if they had if they have a lantern core keyword, then like plus one stats to that character. Yeah, but I don't know if that actually makes sense for Larflees' character. I honestly, have yeah, no clue. like the the most I've seen is like there's some animated movie where they have to go and get the orange lantern or something, and he like is like, "What's mine is mine is mine is mine," and he's like hiding around in like his junk pile of like dragon gold kind of thing. Oh sure, yeah, but yeah, he is a really cool character. I I always liked the. Uh, hero clicks interpretations of him this piece is specifically not the easiest to um and then again i don't i don't know i guess if we went over it but uh the orange lantern that he is the only person in modern or even like tangentially close to modern he's the only character in like the last couple of years that will be able to equip this um pretty much yeah basically yeah uh, but the the orange lantern gives you plasticity, and then if the character can already use plasticity, when it hits with a close attack after resolutions, you may unequip a hit character and equip that equipment to this character. So that's the main way that he gets more like equipment, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, this he does have plasticity, right? Um, yeah, no, it's traded. Yeah, traded plasticity. Yeah. So yeah, and then yeah, they can't automatically break away. So yeah. I he do wish way to, both in like good range way to line steal. of fire or maybe treated as adjacent or something. 
you know, people can like range in line of fire. That'd be kind of neat. Right. Kind of. Yeah. I kind of dig that. You know. But uh. But yeah, that's Lar Fleas. Oh, that's me. We're talking about Dexstar. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh. So yeah, we left off with Lar Fleas. Um. Dexstar is up. He is a Red Lantern. You all knew that. He is an animal and a herald. They're all going to be heralds. So get your herald teams ready, I guess. Um, Dexstar is pretty simple. Uh, he has a single trait that is with blood and rage. Poison when Dexstar uses it and damages an opposing character. Dexstar has safeguard outwit until your next turn. Which is pretty solid. Uh, you have to damage somebody not the easiest thing to do but getting some safeguard outwit for a little 50 point guy is pretty solid uh he has a special attack power that is i kill <laughs> which is fun uh blades claws fangs and precision strike so his dial is super simple it's 50 points six clicks long full dial of super senses uh full dial of battle fury uh full dial of blades but of course the first four clicks is blades precision strike because that special attack power uh, with that precision strike he has four clicks of hypersonic top dial and then ends on two clicks of flurry uh, stats are pretty even he is a flyer he is standard size but yeah his speed top dial with that hypersonic is eight and then on clicks three and four he goes down to a seven um, and then it's seven and six for his last two clicks with the flurry uh, 11 attack on the front two and last two clicks. Ten, two clicks of 10 attack in the middle. His defense is kind of wonky, though. It is 18, 17, 17, 18, 18, 19. So it gets a yeah. big boost on that last click. And then damage is first three clicks is two. Last three clicks is three. Um, blinded by rage. I good kitty. Yeah, some fun flavor text. There's a lot of fun flavor text in this set. Yeah, I like it a lot. Do you like the I good kitty? Lehola. I find one who hurt you. Very funny little uh, yeah. little cat guy. Shrieking I like, cat noises. I like Dexstar's dial, and I like Dexstar a lot as a character. And he is like cheaper than the last one we had, who was 65 points. I do kind of wish Dexstar was somehow 35 points. So yeah. It was like Chip. Chip being the tiny animal lantern people, you know? And it should, I guess, in case we don't mention... Um, the ring does give him, since he's already got traded poison, it is like penetrating poison. True, yeah. So, on top of the constructs and stuff. Yeah, right on. Next up, we have an Indigo one. It's been too long since our last Mission Points figures, so we're going to fix that. Indigo Tribe, Herald, Martial Artist, and Warrior. You can kind of do a little... Uh, there's quite a few Warrior Lanterns, I guess, as well, like Guy Gardner, Fatality, Indigo one. Oh, sure. Yeah. You can do that if you don't want to necessarily want to do a herald team, and then you can get in some other stuff with your lanterns too. But uh, all right, sixty points, six range, two targets, two traits. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Tor L L L X A N whatever support. And the Indigo one uses it. She may target a friendly character within range and line of fire. And after resolutions, gain mission points equal to the number of clicks that were healed. That's really really interesting. Second trait is friendly bystanders within range can use support. Kind of wild. That is. Are the constructs are they considered bystanders or are they? That is a something good question, else. They have a yeah, huge I, lump of I don't, text. I can't I don't, remember if they're considered bystanders. I th I know uh, they're considered hmm. constructs because they have like right. that worded into them. Uh, but they still are technically a bystander you generate, right? Okay. Maybe. I guess they are. Um, I you know the last time I even tried to like remember what they were was with Alia Gregor, but their stats can't even be modified anyways right. by other people. So I was like, oh, it doesn't matter if they are bystanders or not, you know. Um, yeah, I'll just they're assume bys they're they bystanders. They are a bystander, yeah. and then their trait is what gives them the constructs oh, gotcha. stuff. So that's the... Yeah, yeah. this does give a... Uh, does give all of your constructs, I mean, support, which is really cool, or any bystanders you may play on this team. Uh, yeah. Herald, Martial Arts Warrior, yeah, maybe not a ton of bystander generation outside of the constructs. The mission point ability is solid. I do wish it was somehow her or friendly characters you now, or like friendly bystanders you support could also gain mission points, because when it's just her, it's a max of, what, three mission points turn with her and then somebody has to be damaged first even start being able to use this it's not the like greatest mission point ability but uh 
I think it can be a sneaky one if she's already on a team full of like mission point stuff and you got to heal your guys up and it can be a pretty solid like mission point ability. Didn't we get Oh. So, uh oh wait, no, it is it's the indigo ring um yeah. increases the uh the amount healed by one or something like that. So yeah. It's like did we just Roddy, get yeah. an object? Yeah, it's literally the yeah. one that works the with indigo her. ring. Gosh. It's hers. But yeah. It's kind of neat. The dial is, you know, for 60 points, not as great as you would want it to when you got to consider she's mostly just rolling for support. She only has a 10 attack top. I'll go into these. These clicks are all kind of a uh, whole section. So eight speed phasing for the first two, 10 attack in cap first two, 17 defense with ESD for the first two and leadership with three damage on the first two clicks. The next two clicks have an eight speed running shot, 11 attack pulse wave, 17 defense, super senses, three damage with enhancement. Last three clicks all have an 8-speed charge, 10 attack, precision strike, 17 defense, toughness, and 2 damage with close combat expert. Kind of a wonky dial, you know, starts off like, I'm just going to phase in cap leadership, which is really kind of strange power set. And then real hot 2 clicks, you know, running shot, pulse wave, enhancement. And then the down dial kind of bruiser charge close combat expert. It's it's just kind of a wonky dial, and it's it really yeah. It's just really strange. Yeah, there's not. I can't think of a ton of uses for it. it does not start um, where you want it to. At I all. really wish she had like sidestep with a twelve attack, so that way when she's supporting, and then maybe you give her a really low damage, a sidestep twelve attack for like the in cap support. If she could be doing that, that would just help her do her job better. The phasing 10 attack is, is pretty rough, honestly. The the dial is very odd, very strained. So, I don't know enough about this character, but it is odd to me that she yeah. has, like, a lot of her flavor text is just, like, the color of the power, and it just says, like, like end cap is blue light, pulse wave is yellow light, um, precision strike is violet light, oh. green light is ESD. Like, are they able to use all the lights? I don't... Is that the point of, like, indigo? Do they, like, light know. reflection or something? It doesn't really like give yeah. a whole lot of. I mean, I I haven't read into um, too much like outside of like War of Light, so I have not read heavily into the Indigo Tribe. But it is interesting, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, uh, but yeah, is... that is that's Indigo One. I don't really know where she fits on your team, honestly. But do you think she's build around her good with like Wrecker Prime for like a mission point? Like obviously you're losing a lot by putting a 60 point piece on there, but then yeah. all of the Wrecking Crew characters can use support, which is kind of fun. It know. is kind of cool, but I mean, you kind of want them to move actions to like break oh, away right. and stuff, you know, and break, they're such heavy yeah. hitters. I hate to just let them use support. power action support. Yeah. Yeah. But True. you know, Maybe, uh, maybe time will tell, and maybe in a few months after a few more sets come out, maybe she will be kind of used. But right now, I'm having a tough yeah. time what that is, I guess. Her and Dexter, I think, are two of the weaker super rares that you can pull yeah. in sealed. Um, obviously, like in Constructed, they have their uses, or might have their uses. But uh, this next character is actually pretty solid in sealed. So this is 052 Fatality. Uh, she has Injustice League, Secret Society of Supervillains, Sinestro Core, Star Sapphires, and Warrior keywords. So she can actually start equipped because I the Sinestro Core keyword. So she can start equipped with the uh, Yellow Ooh. Lantern Ring or mm, you're right, the uh, Star Sapphire Ring. I guess um, real name Yira Sinril. I guess uh, I played against this in sealed. Uh, Andrew pulled this. And she a little surprising. Um, obviously, since he didn't pull the ring with her, uh, and I had two characters with Invincible, her Mystics did not do a whole lot. She is one of the few characters in the set that can see through hindering without like a Superman team ability, I guess, at least. Um, but yeah, let's get into her dial. So she is a close combat kind of crazy piece. She has... Two stat lines, her top dial, uh, she has 12 speed, 11 attack, 18 defense with combat reflexes, and 3 damage with shape change. She keeps those stats, uh, except for the speed, for her first 3 clicks. So her speed drops down to 10 speed charge. She has a special attack power with an 11, that is Blades, Claws, Fangs, Precision Strike, and Giant Reach of 2 is pretty good top dial getting that extra reach she also has six range one lightning bolt and is a flyer as most heralds uh lanterns will be 
her secondary line it starts at 50 points and it's almost better in some ways so it's 10 speed 10 attack with that special attack power uh, 17 defense with super senses and three damage with shape change so she still has the blades precision strike giant reach of two uh, but she has double rollouts so that's pretty neat uh, two traits on her which kind of makes her um, I mean you can use the second trait with charge or uh, just use her six range because it's uh, nothing crueler than a lever spurned. So, mind control. When fatality uses it, after resolutions, deal one penetrating damage to each target missed by mind control, which is pretty fun. That you can combo a miss with <laughs> still dealing damage. Maybe perplex down your attack if you just want to do one free pen. Uh, and then her second trait is when fatality uses the mystics team ability after resolutions modify her attack and defense plus one till the end of your turn so anytime she gets attacked or would be dealt damage is dealt damage i guess yeah she has to take damage to trigger that so anytime that happens the next turn she'll have a plus one defense or the rest of that turn until the end of your next turn plus one defense and attack which gives her some pretty solid stats for 75 or 50 points um and then the star sapphire ring, like I kind of alluded to, it makes mystics unavoidable. So that's even better. But uh, yeah, that's a pretty okay pick and sealed. Um, I think she's so. real squishy, but at the same time, unless your opponent has like a bunch of outwit, you probably stick around for a while. Yeah, I would say so. I think she's solid. I can't wait to play her a little bit. But uh, yeah, a little, a little close combat piece. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Is there any reason you would run the Sinestro Core ring instead of the Star Sapphire ring? You know, it would help her be like, it's sort of like perplex, right? Yeah. Like, is it double perplex or something? Uh, yeah. I think it's. Hmm. Let me see real quick. I'm trying to remember, because I know Sinestro's special ability is that he can perplex down damage. I think his the, the ring is like perplex if you can already use it plus two. Yeah, when they use it to negatively modify combat value, they can use it by negative two instead. So for just her, it has no perplex. It would just give her perplex, you know? Yeah. And as opposed to unavoidable mystics, maybe if you're like, you know, I don't want her to just get hit and deal damage. Maybe I want her to stay top dial more. You could just give her perplex instead. <laughs> then it's still, you can drop the constructs and whatever for free. There's no difference in constructs anymore. So there's no like exclusivity to that run makes... one ring over the other. Sinestra is not only the only character in modern that can um, perplex on like damage values, but he can also negative two somebody's damage value. I didn't realize that until just now. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, next up, we have Wonder Woman. Yeah, that's right, the th third Wonder Woman in this Batman set. Uh, how interesting! Amazon Justice League DD Pass Soldier Warrior. Actually, really like that she has a Soldier Keeper. There's no other. Uh, I don't think there's any other soldier with Wonder Woman ally besides this Wonder Woman, so I'm kind of, kind of pumped with that. Just she is a hundred or forty-five it. points. Who's oh Steve? I guess Steve does. I don't know if he he's, has the Wonder Woman, but he's not. No, no, he does have the Wonder Woman TA. Oh, okay. I kind of forgot about Steve. Not gonna lie. Um, I think because does. I was building. I think because I was building for the Prince format. I was like, oh, no one has it. That's because I was only looking at super rares. Uh, so Wonder Woman here. 100 points or 45 points. She has a nine click long dial. She is kind of a beast, I will say. I think a great sealed pull. She is a unique character, so let's see what makes her so unique. First trait is Emissary of Peace, Super Senses. When Wonder Woman uses it and succeeds, she can't be targeted by ranged attacks this turn. Obviously, she has a Wonder Woman ally team ability, so she's got a four through six on senses, which is pretty gnarly. Um, yeah, I like it. I really like it. And then she has Incapacitate, uh, when an opposing character within range, so this is a second trait, sorry, not part of the first one, second trait, incap, when an opposing character within range with two action tokens would be given an action token. After resolutions, gain one mission point. Uh, hmm. Yeah. With two action tokens would be given action token. When an opposing character within range with two action tokens would be given an action token. After, After resolutions, resolutions, gain one mission point. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, how can an opposing character gain an action token if they already have... Well, they, they can't, so it's when Ooh. they would. Oh, it's when they would. Yeah, because you can't put another... But, like, you can still in-cap somebody with two action tokens. Or be given an action after resolution games. Oh, I understand. So it's purely... I was like, what? This doesn't make any sense. It's purely for, like, her in-cap or something. 
It's yeah. To help it's actually, out. Okay, that I took me a second to be like, this is "What?" A potentially broken mission point, not in modern by any means, but I think in Golden Age, there's enough effects that just like token up people. Like, so obviously, the Mister Mixelpatik sure. isn't an option even in Silver, but in Golden, um, right? You could like pulse wave, give everyone two, and then have like a follow up with like the casket of winters or something where everybody would be given one kind of thing it is just opposing though, hmm. right yeah so it doesn't help yeah it your is team um this is kind of cool i also, do kind of like this now that i think about it we have even though we made fun of it on the stream uh we do have malekith who also has a traded That's in true. cap uh when a friendly character uses in cap after resolutions gain one mission point and then we have uh the pacifist captain america what's his name uh, oh geez, Cap Principled. Yeah, Captain America. Yeah, Principled. you can remove an action token from them when they use incapacitate or like force blast. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're okay. cooking with fire, right? So we got a little. There's a little something. <laughs> there's a little something there. We got a little. We got a little something. Something. Right on. Right on. Okay, so this could be pretty fun to build around, and that is a trait. At opposing character, you do have to be in, this is an opposing character within range. So you can't really keep her back. So if your idea is maybe, right, I'll be still player at forty five can't keep her back since it's not a friendly character within range would give an opposing character it hers really works off the opposing character so you gotta be kind of close you got a 50 50 senses so let's look into that dial so she does have six range triple bolt which is super helpful and the flight ability she has a stout uh top dial so like i said nine clicks of life the first five clicks are exclusive to her 100 point line the last four are her 45 point line has a special speed power on her first six clicks, so that'll be on her starting line for both of them, which is charge. Friendly characters that can use incapacitate can use charge, so not the best power with incapacitate, but that super helps out all your people that have incapacitate, and it gives you options, which is really solid. So I like it. It also, ironically, helps out that male kith a lot, too, because he has, like, just stealth, stealth right? Yeah. He's got, like, stealth blades. Yeah, so there you go. She's already working hand-in-hand -hand with male kith here, which is hilarious. She has a special damage power on her first three and last three. So on her 45-point line, she won't have this top dial. Damage power is once per turn. When a losing character within range and line of fire attacks a character of equal or more points than themselves, after resolutions, you may give the attacker an action token. Yeah, I don't think you're losing too much by playing her at 45. This is a very specific, you know, equal or more points them an action token it may pop up more than you think i think this is probably really solid in sealed with all the low point people you know attacking and it's probably solid in like uh constructed or modern kind of depending on your venue depending on the night the theme for whatever the build is but it's something it's not nothing handing out action tokens is pretty solid top dial she is anything but a pacifist she has a 12 attack 4 damage with precision strike and an 18 defense with invincible like i said that 10 speed of charge uh special power Later on, after having her Invincible Precision Strike clicks for three, she goes on to some Super Strength Toughness with Perplex. So her 45-point line, she will start with Perplex. With an 8-speed, 11 attack, 17 defense, Toughness, and 3 damage on that line, which is a solid line for just being the new like helper, helping hand roll. And then on her last three clicks, it is all Flurry Blades, Combat Reflexes with that special damage power again, which is pretty pretty insane that she's like the... Peace by whatever means necessary. Pacifist tactic. Necessary yeah. of peace. And then it's like, and Flurry Blades 12 attack 3. <laughs> like, yeah. okay, dang. No, peace out the window all of a sudden. Very cool. She's a, she's a solid Wonder Woman. It's just weird we're getting so many Wonder Women in the Batman set, especially when we have 18 million Wonder Women in modern right now. You know? Not going to say I'm a hater. Just saying, a little, a little strange. A little odd. Like, we've got our Wonder Woman bill filled. I'm I'm all right. She is solid, and she's a fun mission point figure. And I really like Incapacitate as a power. I did play Cat Principled quite a bit, and that was, like, just with, like, to keep action tokening people without yeah. even having an actual win actually, condition, you know? Uh, with fun. cheap uh, in-cap pieces, it was a really fun, like, lockdown team. Like, not oh, fun totally. for your opponent, but no. definitely, like, fun to just, like... Uh, was it's like super giant and black lightning i played a ton with that because they all had double target or triple target like in cap and black lightning could also deal a penetrating damage but this figure i think combined with that cap combined with mail kith in like a silver age format 
that could be really fun. Yeah. Actually, that's even a really solid mission point team. So I do kind of dig her. She has yeah. uh, two, four, six instances of war. Like the word war appearing in her flavor text. Oh, uh, a little, little bit more war. Wild. See, we got one, two. Set, like reads two like an Alanis Marset song. War is yeah. aggression. War is war is base. Is no, war is based. The, the war kids is cool. say it's the super strength wording. Uh, um, war is based. All I'm your so. war base are belong to us. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, if you had too much of Wonder Woman, well, that's great because uh, it's the prime version of Wonder Woman. So, oh, I guess to mention also that one can um, also have like Wonder Woman equipment. So, like she could do lasso and stuff like that. That a lot of that works off like the team ability. So, all right, or is boosted by the team ability. Um, the prime though. So the only difference I can tell is the hair. I think. Um, the the rest of the sculpt is the same except uh this one is holding the lasso like around her arm and or no she's holding the utility belt around her arm um yeah it's kind of kinda interesting yeah so it is significant appearance future state immortal wonder woman came out in 2021 so obviously it takes place in the future probably batman dead i don't know but that that seems like it. Uh, so her keywords are Amazon, Batman Family, Green Lantern Corps, Justice League, Deity, Future, Soldier, and Warrior. So maybe it was like Wonder Woman that was the last of the Justice League in this storyline. I don't know. Uh, someone will tell me. They'll they'll reach out and uh, tell me what happened. First trade. Yeah, mementos of fallen friends definitely seems as though. Uh, yeah. And with like the, people with the keywords. The they didn't yeah. give her Metropolis though. So. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, yeah, for our past is her first rate. Wonder Woman may have both the 001 utility belt and 002 green lantern ring assigned and equipped at the same time, which is pretty solid. She gets to do both the free roll on the utility belt, which I don't know if we've got into that, but uh, it's a whole bevy of options that she can get extra powers and stuff. And then, of course, the green lantern ring giving her willpower. If she can already use it, she gets a plus one pretty solid um second rate is for the fallen when a friendly ca- friendly standard character would be ko'd by an opposing effect after resolutions turn wonder woman to click one wonder woman can use the printed team abilities from friendly characters in your ko area which is mm-hmm. a good way to get a ton of uh it doesn't say let's see can use the printed team abilities from friendly characters in your ko area it doesn't say friendly standard characters for that second half so if, and this is just random, but um, if like negative man's negative spirit was KO'd, I think you would get that uh, outsider's team ability that it's got. I don't know. Uh, but it is friendly standard that heals her to click one, which would be amazing, except she's only five clicks long. So last thing is she's got uh, for the future is her special defense power. It's defend, invincible, and super senses. So like I said, five clicks long. Her first three clicks are Running Shot Psychic Blast with four damage and enhancement. Um, she has that special defense power, those first three clicks. Has a 19 that goes down to two clicks of 18. And then she starts with a 12 attack with that Psychic Blast that goes to an 11 for the second two click or for clicks two and three. And then, yeah, 10 speed with flight. Her last two clicks are charge with 12 speed, an 11 attack, and 12 attack with precision strike, an 18 and 19 with uh, super senses, and then 3 damage with exploit. So very short, very simple dial. Oh, uh, yeah. I think it's basically, oh, she also, I should say, you know, obviously Wonder Woman ally team ability and cosmic energy team ability. So it can't be outwitted, which is awesome. Has a 50-50 super senses her whole dial. So I think, yeah, the, the point is kind of have that super senses or invincible keep you from getting one-shotted and then stick around long enough that somebody is KO'd and you get a heal back to click one. Um, I don't really know where I sit with this Wonder Woman. I know, like, the utility belt can give you the disguise kit so you can ignore characters for movement right. and have shape change. Uh, it also gives you, like, some more useless things for her, like... Uh, 
I think Leap Climb and something else is one and of Snow them. Cloud and stuff. Yeah. It's like, all right, who cares? There's a few that she definitely won't use, but I mean, the Lantern Ring can give her. She could be quite a little or something. You no, know, seventy point one man army with the Lantern Ring though. Little little willpower action. Little uh, little drop in the green chainsaw when she gets up there. Yeah. You know, like you said, the mitt keep her safe. You know, while she's uh she's getting closer and all that jazz. Also, at 70 point defend piece is not bad. Yeah. 19 defend, I mean. Yeah, that 19 is solid. Almost. Almost wish I could also give her the Carter Shield, but ah, well, say la vie, it is what I mean, you can. Yeah. She's an interesting figure. The other two, yeah. I mean, she's like solid, and I do like her, and actually, I do think she'd be fun to build teams around. Again, it's just weird that we're getting so many Wonder Woman's the yeah. Batman set. I do like it. I do like it, though. I like the idea of. Or having the Green Lantern ring and the Bat Belt. I think yeah. what that can do are for all the, were all the pro no because Beast Boy is one of the primes. Three of the primes are like Lantern versions of characters, though. Beast Boy is yes. the only one that's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. You know? Beast Boy is the only one that's not a Lantern. That's yeah, really Even Batman, Wonder Woman, and then or whatever Scarecrow. Yeah, she's not like decked out in green, but she does have the keyword yeah. and ability to. Have the, yeah, ring, the assumption she's got the ring, I suppose. She's like, oh, well, I'll just keep Hal's ring. And it's like, well, I guess you're, I guess they're letting you use it. I don't know. <laughs> Take it off his body, his dead body. Like, <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll use it. <laughs> Thanks. It's not as dark as the time she used, like, Superman's skull as a weapon. Oh, geez. Yikes. That was Did another, not know that was a thing. That was a Good future Lord. thing that happened, too. Oof. Yeah, those bones are, I mean, unbreakable, I guess. I mean, they're not metal, but something else. <laughs> no, you know, they're, they're not that sun, that sun power bone. All right, next up, another Green Lantern. We got Joe Mullane, Green Lantern Corps, Cosmic Detective, Harold, Police, and Paul Attition. Oh, I said that like some dude's name is Paul Attition. <laughs> but... Paul Attition. Yeah, Isn't this Paul a Dolly Attition. Parton song? You're right. Joe Absolutely. Mullane. Joe Mullane. Joe Mullane. Joe Mullane. Joe Mullane. Yeah, dude, that's totally it. Green Lantern team ability, police team ability. He's 75 points. Kind of a squishy dial, but also kind of not. Because she goes, stop. A nerd fight, which is pretty fun. So she has first five clicks without wit. Last two of close combat expert. First three clicks, she got some super senses. Next two, some energy shield deflection. Last two clicks, she's got a special defense power. No attack power on the first two clicks. Followed by three clicks of persistent strike. And last two clicks have entering second blast. First three clicks, a special speed power, and then the last four is hypersonic speed. She's got six range. Let's see what all those powers do. Obviously, she can start with the Green Lantern uh, ring, which can give her willpower, and she already has the trait, which is when Joe Mullane uses willpower and succeeds on a roll of six, you also heal her one click, which is really helpful. Her special speed power is charge flurry plasticity, which is great. It's just very solid. And then her special defense power, which is her stop click, is stop invincible, Joe Mullane has the great size ability, or colossal. So she's going to have like a giant reach three with a six or seven speed hypersonic on those last two clicks, and she'll be a 12 for four on click six or a 12 for five on click seven at close with close combat expert, and which is pretty solid. With the ring, she'll and if only, she's equipped with the ring, she'll yeah. only uh, fail a oh, willpower roll on a one. One, yeah. Really just a one, yeah. Wow, and she'll keep moving. Her bonus is at least only if she hits a six, which is a little bit more balanced than, like, any time she succeeds, you know, she can heal one, which could get pretty nuts on those down dial clicks where it's like, all right, you got to two-tap her quick because she'll just, she's just going to she guaranteed heal almost. Yeah, she's solid. Not the craziest super rare that you can get in Sealed as she is squishy up front, but she can hit hard enough up front with a charge flurry plasticity outwit. People are like, oh, man, do I keep her top dial? Do I need to hit her to, like, mid-dial? Like, she's tough to KO, but I don't necessarily want her to be sitting on those good clicks, you know, bottom dial in a game. So it can kind of cause your opponent, or maybe just straight up catch your opponent off guard if he's like, oh, I'll just destroy this figure. All it's got is super senses, outwit it, you know, punch it for a bunch of damage. Then it's like, oh, she's got what now? You know, could mess him up. So I think she's pretty fun. I think she's solid. I like that we're fleshing out the Green Lantern core keyword a little more. It's kind of the only Lantern core team you can really build a team out of anyways. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to get some different uh, some different things since John was more of a running shot type guy. Batman's also a running shot type person. Same thing with Wonder Woman. Very running shot heavy. Green Lantern also, or Hal Jordan from Wonder Woman. Very running shot heavy. 
And this is the only kind of modern Green Lantern we have that is a charge flurry piece. So she does fit a role on the Green Lantern team that isn't filled right now, which is really nice. Yeah. It's a really fun thing. I really fun like one of the as out of all the heralds, uh she's not the one that I'm most interested in picking up, but I definitely really like that bottom dial. If she's like the one that you're equipping with the Green Lantern ring, it's pretty fun. All right, next up, we're we're done with the lanterns. That was the last lantern. That's it. Um, at least until legacy cards. So, next up is zero fifty five cyborg. Real name Victor Stone from the Teen Titans Go. Obviously, I uh, don't know where else. I guess he could have been like the Doom Patrol version or something. But true. Um, he has the Justice League, Teen Titans, Armor, Celebrity, and Robot keywords. So, yeah, he has a trait that is power moves, willpower, but succeeds on a 4 through 6. When Cyborg uses it and succeeds, choose a standard attack power, and you may choose an adjacent friendly character. Cyborg and the chosen character can use the chosen power this turn. So, every attack power that you can think of, uh, if he succeeds on his 50-50 willpower then yeah, him and that adjacent character just get it, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's not just pick a power, it's also pick and give to another character that can't pick a power. So yeah, equipping him with a Green Lantern Ring or Super Soldier Serum, if you really want to boost that yeah. ability, I guess. I guess yeah, it's, definitely. Uh, I don't know if that would work, because it's willpower but succeeds on a 4 through 6. I don't know if that's two, the two instances of willpower would counteract like where you have to pick which one well, you can already use, yeah I don't, know. I don't think so I think if you, you shouldn't it's like if you can already use willpower modify the role by plus one for super soldier serum right so i think that yeah. should work uh so just keep in mind his whole dial he'll be able to pick powers or pick attack powers uh he has improved targeting through characters which is always fun uh, and then he's got Meatball Party is his special attack power. When an opposing character is generated within range or placed within range, this turn they immediately gain a mobile and modify attack minus one, which theoretically in this set is a very good thing because there's a lot of characters being generated. Yeah. Um, that's the whole lantern thing that's happening. So, And it's not just lanterns, I guess, you know, the tentacles and stuff would also get a oh, mobile. True which for their zero speed would be rough. Uh, but, I mean, modifying attack minus one is pretty good. Um, that's for this turn. So the turn they're generated. Basically, you can't generate something and then immediately charge or attack with your full power with it, which is pretty cool. He has a 75 and 50 point line. That special attack power is for his first five clicks. So you start yeah. with it on whichever point value you, you play him at. Uh, and he's eight clicks deep total. Full dial of running shot with flight. He has 10 speed on his 75 point line. Starts with an eight speed on his 50 point line. So the last two clicks go down to six. But the whole rest of it, it is eight speed. So pretty fast, pretty decent. Has the Teen Titans team ability, obviously. Um, last three clicks is instead of that special attack power, he has uh, energy explosion which is, she's going to eat it. It's a very weird flavor text. Eat it, she's going to eat it. Meat, 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 ball. I haven't seen this episode. Or no, any of the I episodes. certainly have not. So I don't know what's happening. But yeah, he's defense, top dial. Uh, first three clicks are 18s with toughness. And then he starts on click four on the 50-point line is an 18 ESD, which I actually like that. Like, for that point line, I think that's a much better defense move. He has six range, one lightning bolt. So he's outranging some of the set or keeping up with, like, the rest of the set as far as range goes. Uh, and then top dial, he has three clicks of outwit with three damage. And then at his 50-point line, he switches to perplex. So on click four through six, he has three damage with perplex. And then his last two clicks, it's two damage with perplex. Uh, he's not really fitting a specific role on the Teen Titans. But he so he doesn't like give anybody anything because they're a titan, but he does right. still play good with like a team because he's giving away uh, attack powers. So with a full dial of running shot, obviously psychic blast and like maybe precision strike, probably pulse wave. Like those are like the three attacks that he's probably picking. 
but he could also pick something like TK, give it to an adjacent character that doesn't sure. have it, and you can have a double TK that turn. But I don't know. I like him. I don't think I'm going to pick one up just because I, I don't think he's necessary for the Titans team, and I really like the fact that they're kind of a budget, like a solid budget team right now. Yeah. So, I will say him being like the only super rare for Titans kind of makes it like, to me easy. I do wish he had invulnerability. That's, that's why my biggest thing on the dial is like I wish top yeah. dial he had invulnerability and then went to toughness. I think I have as to opposed play him to at toughness 50. to ESD. To yeah, fair, it's, you get five clicks at for for fifty points, but yeah, you start good, with yeah. a twenty from range. Or a which is nice. If he perplexes himself. If yeah. you just, I always think of Cyborg as like he was the bulky, you know off titan you know he's had armor you know whatever he's like robotic he was like the titan that would take the big punch you know so it's a little tough i do kind of just want to complete the team and cyborg was always my favorite member of the team titans so i'll probably have to get him i like his powers i like what they all do do you think it's the the, <laughs> the flavor text is does a uh, weird me out maybe a little bit i'm just like it's kind of just strange Eat meat, 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 and it's like, all right, like I know, I know, Cyborg's a big, uh, a big meat fan, and I appreciate that. I do like that about Cyborg. I mean, we got something in common. Like, oh, load up the plate with steaks and whatnot. But uh, it's kind of funny. I think the Titans. I don't think they need Cyborg. Sadly, I hate to say that. I hate to you know be a heretic here, and you know my my boy Cyborg. But uh, they don't necessarily need him. He doesn't do uh, the worldwide effect that like all the other Titans people kind of seem to do. He does do something that can really help them out. I think he can do a lot of sneaky stuff with guess, the yeah, hanging out attack powers. Something to remember is that if you were to play him on Titans, he'd also probably have stealth, mystics, yeah, Superman stealth, ally. Mystics. Yep. That's something I guess oh. anytime you yeah, see somebody with the Titans Look at the team Titans, going yeah. forward, those are options that they can get. Next up, if I can work through my uh, sealed play PTSD to talk about this guy, we can go over <laughs> it. Uh, Dark Side here as Apocalypse Celebrity Cosmic Deity and Ruler. When we played Sealed this last Friday, uh, listen to the show, Kevin Nelson, old Dark Side, and I, I whittled him down to his very last click. It was just Dark Side and Jinx, and Jinx had the whatever Star Sapphire ring. So he's like, well, I'm not going to shoot her because then I would just instantaneously die because uh, of unavoidable mystics. So, and. He just annihilated my team. Really hurt. Really hurt. This dark side just runs up and punks people. He's very strong and sealed. I would say he is like your number one sealed pick. It's between him and, of course, Deathstroke. But they are insanely, insanely strong in sealed. Kevin was literally like 25 points. No, 15 points under. It was like dark side and then 35 point uh, Batman Super uh, Batman Prime with the belt or right. with the uh, breed <laughs> orange ring. So, but dark side here. I can just I'm gonna put that aside uh, and just put, just whatever. He has improved targeting elevated and characters. That's the Omega Beam running through there. Before we get into his whole mission point trait and all that jazz, let's just talk about the powers he's got on his dial. So it's 250, 125, or 75 points. Eight range, one target, cosmic energy team ability. He can fly. So the 250 line gets you these three clicks. Uh, that's going to be 8 speed with around the same speed with his special speed power, a 12 attack with penetrating psychic blast, a 19 defense with invincible that then ends on a special defense power, which I'll get to in a second, and then a starting click of 5 damage, which goes on to a 4 with a special damage power. The special defense that he has on his third click, so you'll get it on 250, and then he has one all the way at his last click on click freaking 11, is out with, uh, sorry, Stop, Invincible, and Super Senses. So it's a pretty gnarly stop click, especially on that 20 defense stop click, which really gives value to that 250-point line. Special Speed Power, which he has only on his first three clicks and then on his very last click, is How Dare You Enter My Home, Phasing Teleport, After Resolutions, when Dark Side uses it, uh, he may make an attack. So close range, whatever. He's a freaking 12 for 5. He also has 8 range, so he can move a full 8 squares. 8 range, that's a 16 square reach. All on his own. No TK necessary. Disgusting. Also, 
he has a five damage special damage power is outwit perplex ranged combat expert as if he wasn't dealing enough damage he is a 13 for six range top dial with an outwit and a perplex which is pretty dumb and yeah. i hate it especially at what if he perplexes yeah. his range really helps out his range his movement etc etc et get nine. in there really sucks it's almost like aquaman never stood a chance being <laughs> the swimmer he is like oh you can't shoot me within four squares and well doesn't really matter drop the old dark side bomb on a fella and it hurts kind of cuts who kind of cuts deep um all right at half the cost you lose three clicks you lose that amazing stop click you do get to keep that special damage power but you just have normal running shot Enter Psychic Blast, Invincible, for those middle-ish clicks of his dial. He does get some outwit in his 125-point line there on clicks, uh, what is it, 5 through 7. And 75-point line, he starts on click 7, so instead of with all the special perplex range combat expert outwit, he is instead a just running shot, pen blast, invincible outwit piece that goes on to some charge, steel energy, impervious perplex. And like I said, those last two clicks do have that special defense power and that special speed power. What is his trait? His trait is a big mission point ability trait, which is cool. He is also just, I kind of wish, I almost wish Kevin would have just played him for mission points and then uh, dunk it on me so hard, but here we are. <laughs> Knockback. When a friendly character knocks back one or more opposing characters, if at least one of the characters they knocked back hasn't been knocked back this turn, gain one mission point. If Dark Side is 250 points, when he knocks back one or more opposing characters, you gain two mission points. I think combining this with a just ton of knockback pieces. He had Bill in the Discord made quite the Invisible Woman knockback team. Yeah. I think that plus a Human Torch is also the deep cuts. Specifically, these two figures are also good for some knockback teams. Basically, you're only restricted on how many mission points you can get each turn by just how many characters are on the opposing force, right? So just have a ton of free knockback like those Human Torches, like that Invisible Woman. And maybe you have like a Flash Teen Lantern to just carry them all up. You can probably get close to... Six, seven, eight, you know, who knows? However many figures are on their force, knocking them back at that many points, which is pretty gnarly. So a Green Lantern and a full team of Frogmans. There you go. Uh, Frogman's coming back, baby. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's Darkseid. He's really cool. He is a Teen Titans Go character specifically, but if you're a Darkseid fan and you don't care about mission points, that to me doesn't affect this dial and doesn't affect how playable it is. And that trait just gives you knockback. If you're a mission point hater, that's fine. If you're a dark side fan, this should be fine. Because he has a really strong, beefy dial just to being dark side. If you're a Teen Titans Go hater, again, his sculpt, sure, it's more on the uh, muted colors, very bright, very whatever, no like black wash, blah, 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 blah. It's not really gritty, but it doesn't look crazy bobble heady like the other Teen Titans Go characters. He just kind of looks like a normal dark side yeah, to me. He just he looks has like a... maybe more uh, Jack Kirby esque colors and right. face, I would like say, more so than face. anything. Yeah, very early on where it's just very, very bright. I think he's also you know? one of the few dark sides that has the flight uh, symbol, like the wing symbol. Yeah, not many can fly for some yeah, reason. So... I know 200.1 from uh, JLU didn't, and the strategy game one didn't, uh, the slosh one did. But most of them, yeah, most of them are not flyers. So not yeah. only can he phase, he can passenger so one, I guess. Cool. I also like that he has all his flavor text. I do want to watch. This is probably the episode of Teen Titans Go. I want to watch the most because this dark side is, I guess, voiced by Weird Al Yankovic because he has all these, ah, yes, the great singer of song parodies uh, to earn a living by making songwriters look like fools. What's fun about undercutting musicians by subverting their words and compromising their artistic integrity? Like, that's just really funny to me. So, I don't know. I think if you're a Dark Side fan, I think you can put aside any things you may not like about this and you just be like, this is a solid Dark Side. I love, you know, I love Mission Points. I like Dark Side as a character. I really like Weird Al Yankovic's music. I think most people do. Maybe. Maybe they don't. I don't know. But uh, I think he's a great figure. It's also just a solid dial. So. Despite how horrible it was to uh, get absolutely annihilated and everything and sealed by this figure, it is a really good figure. Yeah. I think he's going to be one of the more sought-after super rares. Um, maybe, like him and Larfleeze, probably close, not including the Primes. Uh, from what I've seen, like there's a few Lanterns that people really want, but then this Dark Side's obviously going to be 
like dark sides usually are people like them they try and pick them up all right we're into the chase territory uh so all the chase all the chases are uh scooby-doo um adjacent i guess there's yeah we'll get to them but yeah they're all from scooby-doo so uh first up is fred 057 he's got mystery ink celebrity and detective keywords real name fred jones he's got two traits and two uh different point values he can be played at so his first trait is another mystery solved so this is a shared trait and it's fred uh Unique modifier, when a clue token is placed on a friendly mystery card, friendly characters with the mystery ink keyword modify defense plus one until your next turn. So mystery cards are as simple as like using perplex on an opposing character and like random stuff like that. Uh, so it's fairly easy to get clue tokens every turn. Like not, might be every other turn or something, but yeah, everyone with mystery ink keyword modifies defense plus one when you do that. At least uh, if you're playing Fred here. His next trait is Elaborate Trap. Sidestep, Force Blast, Perplex, but only to target an opposing character who has been knocked back this turn, which is wild. Not only do you have to knock them back, you also have to hope they're uh, still within, I guess, yeah, probably still going to be within range, but yeah, you have to knock them back and then use Perplex. Uh, then he's got a special damage power, his whole dial, and that is, let me take a look at that. Leadership support, support is free, but only if an opposing character with the monster or mystical keyword is on the map. So he has leadership support. If the, your opponent is playing a monster, monster or mystical character, then he gets uh, free support or support as free, which is decent. It's not going to come up a lot, but it's decent. So his dial... Top dial, he uh, is 60 points. Uh, he has two clicks of charge with an 11 attack and TK. He has a 19 and then 18 defend and then three damage with that special damage power. It's kind of a weird seeing Fred with charge, but I get it, I guess. Uh, his TK is called Let's Split Up Gang, which is fun. Uh, his 40 point line starts on click three. It's still charge, TK, defend uh, he's an 8 11 18 3 so really no difference between click 2 and click 3 you're paying 20 points for a plus 1 defense on that defend which with him boosting defenses because of the mystery cards kind of good pretty solid uh, he goes to on click 4 charge with 7 speed 10 attack with precision strike and then he has a 10 attack precision strike the rest of his dial um, 18 with barrier and two damage with that special damage power and uh click five he goes into stealth mode he is now we can't let that thing get away is his stealth still has that precision strike with a 10 attack and that 18 defense with barrier and he keeps two damage with that special damage power for the rest of the dial as well and then on click six he keeps stealth goes back to the defend 18 defend this time and yeah the rest of the dial is the same and click seven uh, the only thing that changes is he gets a 19 on his defense. And nice. then I believe they are all team players, all the chases, all the uh, Mystery Inc. chases, I believe. Um, nope, Scrappy's not. But most of them, I guess the the OG, the five. Yeah. Yeah. The real ones. Players, yeah. I like this, Fred. Um, obviously, I think in order to pull off like a real good mystery ink team you'll probably need some of the chases and the commons maybe even some of the, yeah. the starter set ones but no i think uh i don't know i don't know where he really fits i know he's good because he's boosting defenses um, right. and then he's also like your leadership but other than that i don't want to pay 60 points for his top dial i just really don't oh I do like that he's a little bit cheaper than his common one at lower, so he's 40, and he does a lot of the same thing, the TK, the leadership, the telekine, or the, de you know, the defend. I just wish he still had the mystery machine ability. Yeah. We can carry everyone. So good. You know, I guess then he'd just be a straight upgrade, I guess, of his common version, so maybe team this Fred with a Green Lantern or something. Uh, Detective Joe Mullane there could help them out, I suppose, but... Well, then yeah, he's, has he's solid. Green he's team. not necessarily a like straight, straight upgrade of his common, which I guess is nice. You don't want the common to just be, you know. But 
kind of weird to figure out exactly where he fits on a on a mystery. Team. Definitely. Daphne is next up. Daphne's also doing a little sprinting, a little jogging, a little running. She has trait another mystery to solve. But Daphne this time. Oh, she also has being celebrity detective and as opposed to Fred, she has a martial artist. I don't remember when she was a martial artist, but uh, I think she's got some karate skills in there somewhere, I think. All right. So, her class. mystery to solve Daphne here. Uh, when a clue token is placed on a friendly mystery card, friendly characters with the mystery keyword modify attack plus one until your next turn, which is just kind of really solid. It's really good. So, all those ridiculous attack values the mystery ink crew kind of has get even better. Yeah. So, she's she, a 12 attack, top dial. 13 with that. Yeah, freaking 13. So, that's gnarly. It's the same elaborate trap, sidestep, force blast, perplex. Going to target an opposing character who has been knocked back this turn. And then she has a special attack power, which is her entire dial. So all seven clicks of it is take that. Incapacitate and precision strike. Uh, keep in mind she has triple bolts with zero range as well. So incap strike with triple bolts. Three, make an attack, but only to target an opposing character with the monster or mystical keyword. Mystery gang, they just stunt on monsters so hard. So what's her dial look like? She has first four clicks of charge. Same thing like Fred. First two clicks are 60 points, and the last five are 40 points. So first four clicks, charge. First three, for senses. The other first three, ability control. Then she goes on to her last three clicks of stealth. Her last four clicks all have empower and willpower with, like I said, that special attack power, her entire dial. So... She can make some free attack against some monster and mystical people. There's kind of a lot of monster and mystical in modern right now. You know, between witches and sky tyrants and all sorts of stuff. There's you know, monster and mystical keywords are kind of kind of popular. They're kind of always obviously they always have been, but they are a lot in use. Definitely oh, I think like the, the free attack will be used years. recently. Yeah, I haven't been getting a ton of mystical for sure though. But I think it'll be easier than you think. To use all of the mystery gang special powers, but I really like it. I think the whole mystery card thing is just a free card you just also play. So the fact that you can also just give your entire team, I shouldn't say that, your mystery ink characters a plus one attack is really huge. So I really like this Daphne. I will say I do like this Daphne over the common one you know, versus like Fred. We didn't know which one necessarily they could kind of swap in or out. There's not one that's necessarily fits the role better. So like this Daphne. I think definitely better than just like drawing the blocking instead giving everybody a plus one attack she could potentially charge for a 13 three and then make another free attack against a mystical monster person and then also triple in cap or precision strike really yeah. solid and she's bringing in prob which is the new cheapest prob at 40 points all right scooby-doo yeah <laughs> all right the rut, the rut row has been replaced it has all right now we've got batman uh, Batman Family, Gotham City, Mystery Inc., Celebrity and Detective. So he, this Bat, uh, yeah, Mystery Inc. Batman, I guess, um, also gets all the bonuses from those unique modifiers that the the OG Mystery Inc. gang makes, I guess. Uh, but he himself doesn't do that. So what he has, his trait is Bat Family Training. Batman takes a maximum of one damage from close attacks. Adjacent friendly characters on their starting clicks take a max of one damage from close attacks which is Dang. wild that's like the uh giving that wonder woman armor to everybody on your team kind of thing um obviously it's only for close attacks but if you can somehow give your opponent battle fury or limit their range options by i don't know having a team ability that gives you stealth and then the whole rest of your team can copy that with team player that might work too um, but yeah, that's his whole thing. That's his trait. He takes max one damage from close attacks only. If they manage to shoot at him, then he's taking full damage. He has five range, two lightning bolts. He has the Batman ally team ability and the police team ability. Um, he only has one point line, so he's six clicks long for 50 points. His first four clicks are, uh, charge. Well, he's got charge on his first four clicks, I should say. Uh, he has Precision Strike on his first two clicks with a 12 attack that goes to an 11 attack. Uh, first three clicks of Combat Reflexes, so he's a 20 from close, and then uh, it goes down to a 17, then back to an 18. And then first two clicks, he's got uh, Perplex that goes to two clicks of Close Combat Expert, and then two clicks of Outwit 
all of those his whole dial is three damage so not slouching in the damage department pretty solid with the attack values he goes 12 11 12 11 12 11 with precision strike on the top two and bottom two clicks and then in the middle he's got two clicks of incapacitate uh bottom three clicks of defense is willpower with a 17 18 17 not great but it's going to take him a while to get there most likely hopefully your opponent doesn't have like i guess superman team ability the superman yeah. ally to shoot through stealth uh but yeah then he on clicks three and four he's got 10 speed charge and then five and six he goes to eight speed with flurry so yeah he's got to the batmobile is his charge and then great scott is his flurry flavor text uh but yeah he's a solid i wouldn't say don't die but he's like a solid uh hard to kill piece and then yeah he's dealing damage the whole time he's got five range two lightning bolts so he can if he can get up close or stay in stealth and shoot either way he's got some solid stats in the middle he's a 13 for four or a 12 for four that's just kind of nutty for 50 points yeah i really like this batman I like him a lot. I think he I'm going to definitely see some competitive play. Honestly, giving out that ability to everybody. He's got stealth. He's got combat reflexes. The fact of that, Scarlet Witch can't take away that ability because it's not a power. We'll just straight up always be able to reduce. Yep. He's like adjacent to somebody is also really solid. I like him. I'm curious to see how people build with this guy and what teams he goes on, but I really, really like him a lot. Maybe like Next a up. symbiote so he's got plasticity. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. Do that. Your boy Wonder, Robin here, Batman Family, Gotham City, Mystery Inc., Celebrity, and Detective. Same team abilities as Batman with Police and Batman Ally. 25 points, very cheap 25 points. Five clicks of life, though. Is two clicks of charge, two clicks of combat reflexes, a full dial of close combat expert. His last three clicks, he has plasticity and willpower. He will be a 12 for three with that close combat expert top dial. Is four range, one bolt. He's got one trait, the boy Wonder. Once per turn, for all characters with this trait, an adjacent friendly character named Batman is given a move, close, range, or power action. For resolutions, you may give Robin the same type of action as free. So he just kind of copies what Batman does. So if Batman is given a power action, Robin can be given a power action to charge. Same thing like what Batman has. Free action to then, or sorry, he can free action and he can also do it again, which is actually really cool with Robin. So he copies Batman. Batman is one cost of action. Robin can do that as free, and then he can do any other action as a costed action himself. So he might just get two 12 for three punches off, you know, in a turn. I think he's really solid. And like 25 points, he's super cheap, especially for a character that just mimics what another character did for free. So solid. There's nothing crazy technical or in-depth about Robin. He just has a really cool ability to just copy what another friendly character named Batman did this turn. You're fine. Yeah, yeah it's, too, it's a little too bad that it's not just... Um, like once for each of those. So, like, if you somehow had a Batman, or be like you played multiple Batmans, you could like move close yeah. range. But this Robin could do all those. Like, he can do one per turn, which is pretty good. Yeah. And for twenty five points, I don't know what else you're looking for. Um, yeah, amazing BR pick. Like, this is a oh, dude, first pick that should booster for sure. Absolutely, should be your first pick in a BR, hundred percent. Yeah, don't even look at anything that's over twenty five. Yeah, points. just grab this. Just grab it, bro. You see this chase? That bronze dial, it's over. It's done. You just grab grab it, bro. Chase is clearly the best thing you could possibly get in a PR, no matter what. Definitely, yeah. Uh, next up, it's Velma. Maybe the weakest of the chases um, as far as uh, Mystery Ink goes. But she's got Mystery Ink, Celebrity, and Detective. Um, she has, of course, the another mystery to solve. Her unique modifier is plus one to range, which is actually not terrible. It's just... Uh, not as great. I would prefer defense or attack usually. It's more applicable, especially when um, Daphne and Fred are both at zero range. So giving them a plus one does nothing. But she herself has six range, one lightning bolt. Her elaborate, tra- or she also has the elaborate trap trait. So sidestep, force blast, perplex, but only for knocked back characters. Uh, and then she has a special damage power, her whole dial. Time to put a monkey wrench in this whole operation. Wit, when Velma uses it, choose a keyword or a team ability, and until your next turn, opposing characters adjacent to the target that have the chosen keyword or team ability can't use the chosen power, which 
I don't know how often that'll happen, but um, it is like good for breaking yeah. up clusters, I guess. Like you know, if you're going to if you're going to do such a thing, or I guess maybe if you have like plasticity and you can keep two opposing characters like tied down or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's all right. It's nothing. It can crazy, be, yeah, though, it does but it's like the odds of them fence, also uh, though having that uh yeah that, that power, power you know what i mean like they it. also well, have it so you could also mm. like not that this is a great play or anything but uh if there was one non-power cosmic or non-cosmic energy uh character next to one that had cosmic energy you could name a power that the cosmic energy character had while targeting the the non-protected one um because it doesn't target the like the second adjacent character with it they just can't use it so mm. you can kind of do that but again it's just a lot of setup it's so much setup and then yeah uh anyhow her dial she also has team player she has stealth for the first four clicks precision strike her whole dial with only two clicks clicks three and four which happens to be click three being her 40 point starting line um she goes down to a 10 otherwise she has an 11 precision strike her whole dial 18 defenses almost the whole dial with willpower for some reason her 40 point line starts with a 17 and then goes to an 18 uh, kind of cuts deep a little yeah. rude if you ask a little, me a little mean uh three damage for her first three clicks and then two damage for clicks four five and six and then back to three damage on click seven like i said this isn't the most important chase for uh from the mystery ink squad if you wanted to play them i think that this velma could easily be substituted for the common um but yeah, I unless you really think that you know boosting range is going to be something amazing, I don't know. Be kind of sort of yeah, situational. That's what I'll call it situational. Next up, Scrappy Doo, old seven damage Scrappy Doo here, Mystery Inc. Animal Celebrity Detective, twenty five points, also tiny size, which is kind of precious. Uh, Scrappy Doo has two traits and a special def. Sorry. That is a lie. He has a special damage power and a special defense power. So, special defense, his entire dial. Super strength. Yeah. Super strength. His entire dial as well, which is interesting. Uh, and then, yeah, special defense, super strength. Then he goes charge to flurry and then charge to flurry. Then he has his special damage. Then close combat expert, special damage, close combat expert. So, on his flurry click, he has close combat expert. On his charge clicks, he has his special power. Very interesting, very strange, me, anyways. But let's read his first. Uh, we'll wait up on his first traits here. We'll actually just go. His damage power is close combat expert and outwit. So forget what I said. He's got close combat expert. That whole freaking dial yeah. plus outwit, which is pretty cool. His special defense is toughness. Happy dude takes a maximum of one damage from characters with the monster or mystical keyword, and this is protected outwit. So. Again, really situational on this one. I know I said there's a lot of monster and mystical, but when it comes down to this whole banking on only taking one damage thing, maybe not as great as other abilities. So, you know, it is really nice. Obviously, you think it's great, but uh, it is still, again, only uh, only if they're monster or mystical. But it also just gives them toughness. Mystery Ink Swap comes out, and you'll be able to interchange. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Eat. Mystery ink swap. Oh, good lord. Hopefully, oh, hopefully not. Please. That would be horrible. I don't like it. So, before we get into his let me add him trait, we're going to read a second trait here just because it'll be a little uh, easier, you know, before we get into all the sideline stuff. Happy to do hits, choose one to last until your next turn. Hit characters can't be given free actions, or hit characters gain immobile. But yeah, pretty. Pretty freaking gnarly here. I, I like it a lot. I think it's really sick. I think it's really fun. But yeah, so hit characters gaining a mobile or maybe given free actions. But how are we going to get Scrappy Doo up in the fray when he only has a 8 speed charge? Headline active. A friendly character with a shared keyword of 60 points or less is KO'd. After resolutions, you may generate Scrappy Doo from your sideline on click number three. That is his charge click. In that character square. If the KO'd character had the Mystery Ink keyword, you may generate Scrappy Doo on click number one. So he can be right in the thick of it, right in the fray, and then he freaking can go puppy power, punch him, and then boom, he's free actions, hit characters gain a mobile. This is going to happen on your opponent's turn. Biggest thing, right? So it's like, hopefully, 
you're running, you know, whatever, Mystery Inc. specifically, and then you can make sure he's on click one at the very least, so that way he's not just an e 25 points for your opponents to, like, take out, you know? Like, that is the one thing you might have to worry about with Scrappy. But he's pretty fun. I think he's really solid. I also think if you can just get him up in there, you know, I wish there was a way to give him some kind of, like, free attack. Maybe that would make him a little too good if you could carry him all the way up, alpha strike, free attack, boom, no free actions for you, or you just get immobile. But that's really strong, and I think there's definitely ways to make this guy, like, work. Plus, he has close combat expert, you know, outwit. So he's a 12 for 3, carried by any one. Sideline active. I like the more sideline stuff they're adding in the set. Peacemaker, Scrappy, etc. Just because sideline for a while is just like swap and scroll spies and destroyer. So I do like this at the very least. If you want any... I guess, you know, Animal. Animal's probably going to love this guy. Especially if there is a good Scooby-Doo. They will end up throwing on an Animal team. I think Animal overall just gets a huge buff this oh, set. Yeah. So... It's kind of insane, but I like Scrappy. I do think he'll actually, yeah, I think he'll make some some animal teams, at the very least on the sideline or something, you know, but I, I dig him a lot. Yeah, I think he's a ton of fun uh, sideline. Or, yeah, just for 25 points. That's a super easy 25 points to throw in. And, oh, yeah. yeah, damage output is crazy. Next up is Shaggy. Uh, so this is our, no, not our last. Um, this is, a, I guess, second to last uh, another mystery to solve. So Shaggy's modifier is damage, which is crazy. Um, old Norval Shaggy Rogers here. He, so anytime somebody would put a token on a clue card, you modify damage for all the Mystery Inc. characters. He's got the elaborate trap trait, which we've read a few times. So sidestep force blast, perplex, but only for characters that are knocked back. And then he has a special speed power, his whole dial. That is, like, get out of my way, charge, when Shaggy uses it, or, yeah, uses it and hits. If a hit character has the monster or mystical keyword after resolution, after resolutions, he can use flurry as free. Otherwise, after resolutions, he may make an attack. So, he has charge. If he hits, he gets to make another attack. And if he um, hits somebody with a monster or mystical keyword, he gets to flurry instead, which is pretty nuts. Uh, it's a whole lot of attacks. He has improved movement through blocking that destroys blocking. So yeah. He's running around like the juggernaut here. And he also ignores characters, which is awesome. Uh, I think this is one like my favorite chase um, for multiple reasons. Yeah. But yeah, if you can get a clue card or get the thing on the clue card and you're running them, he has got some stout stats with multiple attacks and stuff. So uh, his first three clicks, like I said, he has that speed power, his whole dial, which is charge and then extra attacks potentially uh his first three clicks he has precision strike he has 12 attacks on click one and two goes down to an 11 on his 40 point line uh, first three clicks he has an 18 with super senses uh first two clicks he has shape change with three damage and then he goes down to two damage for clicks three through six and then gets back up to a three damage on click seven uh, on click four through seven, he goes to quake instead of precision strike. He has an 11 attack on click four and then tens on five, six, and seven. Uh, speeds basically stays the same except for the last two clicks. Instead of eight, he gets a six speed. But yeah, old Shaggy just bursting through walls, ignoring people. And that's awesome because he's got sidestep traded. So yeah, he's actually pretty nimble and able to kind of punk on some monsters really you make hard. a lot of attacks man <laughs> like yeah, you charge up wild shaggy with the right setup shaggy just one turns a sky or not a sky tyrant um a black heart a black heart yeah yeah <laughs> like all on his yeah. awesome it can it's pretty gnarly i like it i do like the uh ignores blocking i i'll kind of take that as when he like runs so fast they like run into a wall yeah, it's like their outline yeah, yeah. I think that's it's what fun. i was thinking I think oh, I like the, him. I like him a lot. Yeah, he's the only um, mystery ink character that has an improved movement in the chases. Really? Ooh, that is really good. Then who was? Uh, oh yeah, none of them even had improved targeting. Oh wow, yeah. So Shaggy here is improved out the wazoo. Yeah, Shaggy's awesome. So dope. They kind of they did Shaggy right in this set. The the starter, the le, the main set, all this like they the fans are happy. Oh, yeah. Next up, last chase in the set to round it out before we go on to the legacy cards. We have Scooby Dooby Doo, the main dog himself, 
Animal Celebrity Detective and Mystery Inc. keywords. Traits, his another mystery to solve is going to be speed plus one. It's something. It can actually, it can really help you out with all the charge, with all of the... Do they, do they all just straight up have charge? No, Scooby's got hypersonic speed, which is uh, gnarly. All of them, but uh, yeah, it's Scooby and Velma. Velma has, yeah, stealth, that's right. But everybody else has charge. That can really help out with their move and attack. So this one is, you know, it's something. Is the whole thing, sidestep, force, blast, perplex, only to target a character, knock back this turn, blah, blah, blah. Is a special speed power his entire dial? Is quake his entire dial? He has toughness his entire dial. And he has a three damage his entire dial. First three clicks, he has in power. Last four, it's enhancement. Up dial, he's got some nice 18s and 11s and 8 speed. Uh, and then down dial, he has toughness. It's the mystery ink keyword automatically break away if an opposing character with the monster or mystical keyword is on the map. This is gnarly. Not just like, oh, if you hit, you can automatically break away this turn. It's just nope. You ignore. You automatically break away whenever there's a monster or mystical person on the map. This kind of gives you an insane amount of like yeah. movement. Map. I really, really like this. And then he has, like I said, hypersonic speed, which pairs perfectly with his, you know, hypersonic speed ability. So it's pretty gnarly. I like this Scooby. He's simple. I don't know if I like him necessarily more than the common. I think he really helps out the team's map-wide effect a lot. But man, playing that common and sealed with the charge, quake, shape change, super senses, Bob was so good. This one is also really good. And I think for 40 points, it's a hard not to run him on just every Mystery Inc. team. Because, like, oh, Monster Mystical... It doesn't even have to be, you know, ignoring specifically monster or mystical on breakaway. It's just if they are on the map, then you just straight up you ign- you automatically break away from any opposing character. Uh, yeah. So if they're on the map, yeah, it doesn't matter. They nice. don't have to have specifically monster or mystical as long as there's someone on their team that has it. So it is pretty gnarly. I actually like this Scooby a lot. Yeah, Jeez, that's crazy. The years cool. 2023. You'll believe a dog can fly. Coming yeah. soon, Batman. Yeah, that's kind of wild. <laughs> The fact that he has flight is hilarious to me. I've yeah, never I don't seen get that. that episode, but I don't know what uh... Professor Flacky's flying suit. Yeah, but I guess so. He's homeboy's flying. Yeah, we do flying, and I don't uh, don't know why. <laughs> I would totally get it, but all right, right on. All, all right, right, you want to jump yeah. into these legacy cards, Simeon? Absolutely. I don't think we do any of the uh, the LE stuff. I think we just keep on trucking through the legacy cards. Yeah, we, we mentioned Ultra Instinct it. Shaggy, I believe. So Yeah, we talked about him a little um, bit. First up is from the Batman set. It's number 001 Batman. So, yeah, he's got Batman Family, Gotham City, Justice League, Justice League International, Outsiders, and Detective Team of, or Keywords. I wish Team Abilities. Um, he has a trait that is Flight. When Batman ca- carries, carried characters have Batman ally team ability until your next turn. So, yeah, he has traded flight, and then when he carries somebody, they just get stealth that turn. He has improved targeting through hindering. He has super senses, willpower traded, uh, and then he has a special attack power from clicks 2 through 10. That is smoke cloud precision strike. Free, if Batman occupies hindering terrain, place him in a square of hindering terrain within four squares and line of fire. All right, so, yeah, he's got nine whole clicks of that attack power. Not his top dial, though. Uh, So he has three point values. He comes in at 160 or 30 points. For 100 points, you get 10 clicks. Um, Start with charge, 12 attack, 18 defense with toughness, and three damage with perplex. Uh, Like I said... He's got those two traits, traded super senses, willpower, and then um, got a whole lot of stealth. Does have regular smoke cloud, so it's possible you'll use it. I don't know. Uh, goes to flurry on click two with that special attack power and 17 combat reflexes, three damage outwit. His 60 point starting line is on click five, where he'll start with flurry, 11 attack, uh, three damage perplex and 18 defense toughness and then his 30 point line is his last three clicks um so click eight nine and ten he starts with charge has that special attack power no defense power whatsoever so he's just a 17 and then a 16 16 uh, no damage power either so he's just a three damage and then goes to outwit with two damage and two da- yeah two damage with perplex on his last two clicks uh, this is a good Batman. He's fun. I don't know how different this is than the original, but I like yeah. him. I think he's fun. 
I too don't know much about the original. I do know it's whatever is like two hundred points as opposed to one hundred points. Also, Batman, you can't just ask somebody. Oh my goodness! How much yeah, you yeah. Oh, you can't just say that. Yeah. I no, I think he's really cool. He's really solid. Really fun. I think people. I think people will get a kick out of this Batman. Sure. Yeah. And he should be one that most people would have had if they were playing around that time. Or yeah. if you're a Batman fan, it's like one of the easiest to pick up. Just a common zero zero one. Yeah, I'd say so. Also, speaking of uh, of some figure that should be easy to pick up, not too long ago, the old common Commissioner Gordo here. Uh, no N. Don't take no for an answer here. Yeah, for some reason the name of this dude is Commissioner Gordo on his card. It's really funny. Oh, is it really? Uh, yeah, it's Commissioner Gordo. <laughs> So Clix really has it wrong. It's not Gordon. It's Commissioner Gordo. So get that right. Joe, fix it. Fix your website, brah. So yeah, Commissioner Gordo here is the common from the Batman the Animated Series. Set. So it should be, again, relatively fresh in some people's collections to pick up. Got Detective Gotham City Police. He's 30 points. He is way cooler now. He is, still has the Force Blast, still has the two clicks of barrier, two clicks of leadership, willpower on his last click, and his special attack power. Used to be some kind of, like, in-cap power or something. He has police team ability. He has five range. Is now telekinesis. Telekinesis is free, but only to target another friendly character that shares a keyword with Commissioner Gordon. So he's got TK for free for Detective, Gotham City, and Police. The set gave us quite a bit of Detective in Gotham City. There's also some police still in modern roaming around, like Flash, uh, miles miles west etc there were some police team being used so it's free tk to target detective gotham city and police that is really freaking solid so there can be some potential wild teams with commissioner gordo here and he's just a very simple cheap figure not much else to say but yeah tk is free to target detective gotham city and police and he's got leadership makes him a very nice support figure oh yeah plus barriers just so, yeah he's a great support figure cheaper than uh Venom Magneto. Right? Venom Mags, yeah, yeah, exactly. He's five points less than Venom Mags. Now, a little bit of a caveat, sure, but yeah, yeah, you'd, it'd have... have to be the right team, obviously. But um, yeah, you can like cheat him on certain teams and stuff. So yeah. interesting for sure. I think people might be sleeping on it. I don't know. Uh, next up, a character that I, I think this is like my number one wanted uh, legacy card or legacy figure, um, yeah. just because. I like don't die tech kind of stuff. Uh, this is Crazy Jane from the World's Finest set. Um, so, also, I, I managed to get this legacy card because I got third place. Uh, that's right. Yeah. I think, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. They opened two cases, so four legacy cards. I was like, how did I get a choice? Because I did have a choice. Of, I can't remember what the other one was. But, uh, anyhow. Crazy Jane, she's got the Outsider's Team ability, 50 points, or not really 50 points. Um, so her thing, main thing is, uh, at the beginning of your turn, nope, that's not it. It's, you will have to beat all my personalities. When revealing forces, give Crazy Jane a personality token for each 10 points of her point value, uh, up to 50. So when Crazy Jane would take damage, instead of removing one of her, instead, remove one of her personality tokens when crazy jane has no personality tokens ko her so you can pay, play her at 10 20 30 40 or 50 um and then you get that many personality tokens for each 10 points of her point value so if you play her at 10 and she gets hit instead of taking damage she removes her personality token but then the part of her trait where if she has no personality tokens you ko her comes in so she is just a single hit character a single uh, hit will KO her at 10 points, but yeah. at any of the other point values, uh, she can just keep taking hits, and it's pretty pretty solid. Um, it's not optional, though, so it is when she would take damage, instead remove one of her personality tokens. So if somebody was going to like poison you, and you were like, ah, I'll just take it, that's not a choice, yeah. sadly. Mm. Uh, her other trait is, at the beginning of your turn, roll a V6 and turn Crazy Jane to the click number matching the roll. When Crazy Jane removes a personality token, roll a D6 and turn her to the click number matching the roll. So two ways to turn the dial at the beginning of your turn and then when she takes damage. And then she just has every power that's ever been printed almost. Uh, so she's got yeah, four no range. She's not a flyer. She's just standard boot, fist, shield, damage. Um, two damage her whole dial. Her defense values go 16, 17, 16, 17, 16, 17. Her attack values go 9, 10, 9, 11, 10, 9. 
Uh, speed values go 6, 14, 7, 7, 7, 6. Um, and then the powers for <laughs> those. Uh, her first click is Stealth, Super Senses, and Shape Change. So good defensive click. Her second click is Phasing with that 14, 10 attack TK, 17 with Defend, and 2 damage with Perplex. Uh, click 3 is Sidestep, Smoke Cloud, Mastermind, and Outwit. So you're basically getting a sidestep outwit on that click. And then uh, I don't know if you'd ever mastermind her damage to someone else. That's wild. Um, click yeah. four is plasticity, poison, toughness, and exploit, which is pretty solid because that's the click with the 11 attack. So pretty solid click. And then uh, click five is charge, precision strike, combat reflexes, and empower. And her last click is... 6 speed with running shot, 9 attack with pulse wave, 17 defense with willpower, and 2 damage with probability control. So there's only a few kind of dud clicks in here, but either, like, no matter what click she's on, if, like, she's in the right position, she's a good, like, team player, she's a good support piece. Yeah. Having outsiders plus empower, perplex, outwit, prob, um, really, like, she's not doing a whole lot of attacking, but she does have the potential to land on one of the clicks where it's good. Yeah, I just like this piece. I really like want to play it with the uh, haha Joker super rare. Um, and then they just both constantly change their dials. And my beginning of turn takes 20 minutes. <laughs> Jeez. Because I'm, yeah, no kidding. Oh, she is unique, I believe, though. Um, yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, she is. So you can only play one of her. You can only play one of the haha -ha jokers. But someday we'll have a, a whole three hundred point team that's just characters that roll at the beginning of the turn and change their dial. So that's so nice. Can't wait in this group. I like it. I think she's a fun little don't die piece. Little crazy Jane, and she, again they are using the Lacy cards here to help fill out the what's it called Doom Patrol. Oh yeah, and that's kind of the yeah, which is always does nice. Have only the Doom Patrol keyword so. I guess Ooh, that's okay. worth mentioning. She can't go on any team thematically unless it's Doom Patrol. Okay. Thankfully, we'll get to something that really helps that out. But much later, much later, not yet. And now we got to talk about Nightwing, Detective Gotham City, Martial Artist, Outsiders, Police, Teen Titans. I have no idea what set this Nightwing is from. Kind of old, kind of got a bigger uh, sculpt, but he's got special crisis. powers, so it's like crisis. Okay. Yeah. Good set to choose from. Good set to choose from. Is traded close combat expert in empower, which is really gnarly because he's always got like a two or one damage, the majority of his dial, or a ten or nine or eight attack for his dial, so he needs it. Special speed power for his first three clicks is charge, flurry, and leap climb, so he will be an eleven for three, moving a big five squares, taking two attacks, which is nice. And then his special attack power, which he has on the back half of his dial on his last four clicks, as if Nightwing occupies elevated terrain, you modify his combat values plus one as he is Line Grayson, and then his special defense on his first three clicks is Combat Reflexes, ESD, and Super Senses. So he's a 19, no matter what, top dial, plus he's got Super Senses. It's a pretty fun 50-point figure. He's got Batman Ally, Outsiders, Teen Titans, and Six Range. Starting with Incap, he's got some leadership, gets some Perplex and Outwit later on. Detective, Gotham City, Martial Artist, Outsiders, Police, Teen Titans. It's a pretty fun Nightwing. It's nothing crazy. He kind of got... You know, some old kind of combat values, some old stats, but he's got abilities that help buff the stats, which is nice. So it's nothing insane, but he's probably a fun figure. I think you throw him on a, guessed it, a Teen Titans team, and now he's got freaking, you know, Superman. He already has Batman, but now he's got Superman. He also brings outsiders to help out the Titans. He's got Mystics, all sorts of fun stuff. So I think he's pretty cool, but he's really nothing crazy. It's like a fun casual old night with yeah, for sure. Give you a more mystic fodder that your opponent has to chew through. Yeah. All right. Next up from Justice League Unlimited is the question. Um, his dial is pretty simple. It's four clicks long. He's got stealth the whole dial. He's got Justice League team ability, full dial of combat reflexes with two clicks of 17, two clicks of 16. First two clicks, he's got two damage outwit. Last two clicks, he's got two damage with perplex. And first two clicks, he has a 10 attack with the special attack power, Binary Gas. Smoke Cloud. Smoke Cloud is free, but only to generate one marker. Friendly characters occupying the terrain markers generated by the question, can you shape change? Pretty good. If you're going to use power action, Smoke Cloud, um, the fact that it could give you your whole team or several characters on your team uh, shape change is pretty solid. Um, and then he has a single trait that is 
please, I go through everyone's trash. So we have that in common. That's pretty cool. Uh, when an opposing oh, character yikes. within six squares uses Goodness. outwit, perplex, or prob. I really like this one. Um, outwit, perplex, or prob. If there is no d6 on this card, after resolutions, roll a d6 and place the result on the card. When a character within six squares make an attack roll, you may remove the d6 from this card and replace a die in the roll with it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's die replacement, but it activates on an opposing outwit perplex or prob it is within six squares so hopefully you're close enough that you can get it but yeah for 30 points uh he's got detective justice league martial artist and reporter keywords yeah he's just a die replacement that can potentially give your whole team shape change or at least all your friendly characters shape change okay right on i do wish you know, the question is a martial artist. He is, you know, he can throw some good punches. I do yeah, wish maybe we get, we'll get one happen. eventually. You know, hopefully eventually we do get a question that can reflect that. But I do like the idea of a, a Batman detective heavy set getting question back. It's cool. I dig it. Again, easy to get since it was just in Justice League Unlimited, you know, a 2020 set. So not hard to get a hold of. Uh, next up, the first legacy figure we ever sort of kind of knew about this set. Well, it can't, we knew Riddler was going to be in it. We didn't know exactly which one. Speculated. And here we have the Superman Legion of Superheroes. Ugh, the Riddler. 35 points. Well, Edward Nigma here. He's got three clicks of stealth, some leap climb, some smoke cloud, and then some super senses. Top dial. Three clicks of eat. One click of shape change. Wow, is this really a, a Superman? Good lord, is this really, is this dial, am I, do my eyes deceive me? Is this dial really this low in stat-wise? And it came out in the yes. Superman Legion of Superheroes set? Wow. Last two clicks, willpower, and outwit. Oh my gosh, good lord, what yeah, is this? When's the last time you saw a printed 8 attack? 8, 10, 16, 2, 8 attack. I mean, this set was like 2013, 2014? Why? why are, yeah. What are the values? What's going on long here? Ago. What in the world? Well, I, Edward yikes. Enigma unable okay. to throw a punch. Interesting, Edward. Interesting. He has a trait. Riddle me this. A perplex, but can be used regardless of line of fire, I guess, with 5 range. That's cool. When Riddler uses it to target an opposing character. After resolutions, you give that character a puzzle to token. Second trait. That one too hard for your room temperature IQ. When an opposing character within range with a puzzle token would be targeted by perplex. So let's say you just perplex him again, right? You on a one remove all the puzzle tokens from that character. On a two through four, you gain one mission point for each puzzle token on that character. On a five or six, use of perplex has no effect and gain one mission point for each puzzled token on that character. Kind of weird. Because you already gain one mission point for each puzzle token on a two through four, and you want five or six to be like the best, but instead it's like, oh, nothing happens with that perplex. And it's kind of interesting. But yeah. that's kind of okay because here's here's kind of the, the fun bit, right? Maybe if it's Riddler's perplex, like, oh, that sucks. My perplex didn't pop off. If it's a friendly perplex targeting that character, then it doesn't work. So that I'm like looking at this. When opposing character in range, puzzle token would be targeted by perplex. Yeah, yeah. Any person's perplex targets that person. You might remove all puzzle tokens. You might gain a mission point, or and if it's perplex, whatever friendly, this is good. If it's not friendly, then it's not good. But uh, you can have no use of perplex. That's kind of cool. So if they have perplex on their team, they're like, ah, shoot. Now it's dangerous for me to even perplex my own characters once Riddler has perplexed me because ah, I've got a freaking puzzle token. That's kind of cool. Yeah, not I the think... craziest way to get mission points. Not the most consistent, most bestest, however you want to say it. But it is solid. It is definitely kind of funny. It makes your opponent think about whether or not they're going to perplex somebody. Kind of interesting. Yeah. A little different. A little different. It's. I, I think it's like a good like cumulative. Like I can think of like a few teams where uh, if this Riddler doesn't like move and he like stays protected and uh, the opposing team is like a slow moving or like they don't leave their starting area kind of team. I could see yeah. this like, you know, by turn three, you have three puzzle tokens and you've already gained um three i guess mission points and then like you'd get another three potentially like you might also just remove them fun thing is like if you remove all the puzzle tokens you still get the use of perplex whereas oh that's true that is nice five six you get the mission points but not the perplex which is yeah it is kind of wonky not like how we're used to roles working but i think it's like balanced right. or whatever his his effect is like one is bad, uh, six is also uh, kind of bad. Like, I don't know. It's like, yeah. a, I don't know. 
interesting balancing that the Riddler himself is doing is how it seems. But yeah, I really like the flavor text on him too. It's mostly just riddles, except uh, his two damage powers are ah, 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 and no cheating, which is kind of similar to the, uh, I don't know, that's like stuck in my brain from Arkham Asylum series. Where he's like, ah, ah, ah sure. no cheating. He's constantly like radioing you, which is wild that he has uh, access to the bat radio, I guess. But no yeah. point. Uh, next up, we have the Joker. So this one is from Icons. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, everybody said it, but I'll say it as well. They brought back armor piercing, and they just like traded it on this Joker. So sixty points, four clicks of stealth, um, seven clicks long, five clicks of poison, uh, three clicks of mastermind that goes to three clicks of willpower, and then one click of toughness with the mighty. 13 defense on that last click. Three damage with outwit on the first two clicks, and then um, two damage with outwit on click three. Last three clicks are perplex with a two damage that goes down to two clicks of one damage. He's not great. His stats are pretty bad, but uh, top dial, he does have an 11 for three. Uh, he does have poison, and then he's got a trait that it's it's either them or me, or it's either me or them, Batman. The Joker can't be the target of an attack with more than one target. I think that's pretty flavorful. He's like, yeah, you either have to come after me or save them kind of thing. Um, the Joker has safeguard, mind control, outwit, and poison, which is quite a bit to be safeguarded about. Uh, he has all it takes is one bad day. Damage dealt by the Joker can't be reduced below one. So no toughness, no invincible. Like It's more powerful than uh, the Red Lantern ring, actually. Um, oh, yeah. When the Joker KOs an opposing character after resolutions, heal him two clicks, and until the end of your next turn, when he uses poison, he deals damage even if he's moved or placed this turn. So you can't just drop him and poison, but if you KO an opposing character, which includes like a bystander, uh, when the Joker does that, he could be moved or placed and then use poison, uh, which is pretty fun. It's till the end of your next turn, so you could even poison kill like something that turn, and then next turn have him walk over and poison something else. Potential, like if they have enough bystanders, you could just keep walking around poisoning things. Uh, but yeah, he's pretty fun. I like him. I think he's got he's definitely got like a niche that people play him with. Uh, like I said, other people have already stated that um, he's part of like the old, the OG like lamp build where you would carry up, drop him off, poison with armor piercing. He's got half of that built into him. So yeah, true. That's kind of fun. I mean, it's like I like when they do stuff like that. They did it with the what's his face Fire Lord card, where it's like, oh, you can make an attack after being carried. Where it's like technically. Everybody could do that, but like that's the figure they did it with back then. That was the combo right. that worked. So I like the people had the knowledge of how these old figures worked, how they played them, and then they make them played the same nowadays, even though that's, you know, technically a little different, right? But it's like that's who they used it for. So that's really cool. It shows a good knowledge of like hero clicks history and fun when it's like, well, when I think of this character, you know, they're getting a legacy card. I think of them doing this specific thing and it's when they do that. Yeah, uh, definitely. Right on. Next up is Atrocitus. Kind of dig him. It was a, I was a little bummed to find out that he was going to be a legacy figure and not like a main set. You know, I, I'm a big fan of the Red Lantern core, but we got three. We can almost make a 300-point team with him. We're getting there. So Atrocitus here is at 125 points or 75 points. This is the, the 75th Atrocitus, so don't accidentally buy that like War of Light starter set. No, that's, that's, no, 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 no. You don't want that one. Well, the DC 75th 42 Atrocitus here. So his second starting line is on click four, which is his last click of on dial charge. And then his 125 points. He's got a big nine clicks of life with Battle Fury the entire time. Oh, I wonder why. It's almost like they're angry or something. And he has invulnerability on the first three clicks. So it'll also be on the starting line on 75 points. And then toughness on the rest of his dial. Super strength only top dial. Followed by four clicks of blades and then four clicks of poison or sorry i almost said 10 clicks yikes four clicks of charge and then four clicks or sorry five clicks of a special speed power down dial so he's going to start with that charge blades on his 75 point line he does have a good four damage 11 attack charge super strength top dial which i kind of dig first trait caustic rage adjacent opposing characters can't use stop and can't be healed i like that a lot 
I think he could be a competitive figure if he had like a 50 or less point line. So I'm really thankful that he has a 125 and 75 point line. So hopefully that means he'll be relatively cheap for me to get this guy. But an adjacent opposing characters can't use stop, can't be healed. It's just really solid, but he's not so cheap where it's busted. The second trait is blood sorcery, which is probability control, close combat expert. It helps him out a lot. He is probably one of the few legacy figures in this thing that has, like, just really... Not one of the few, but he has really, really solid values for coming out back in DC 75th. Oh, yeah. You know, 11 for 4 top dial, and he only ever drops down to, like, a 9 for 3 down dial, you know? Lowest defense is a 16. Like, that's really not bad at all when you think about only 125 points. Now we're saying, oh, he's got close combat expert the entire time, so he's a 12 for 5 top dial be an 11 at the lowest until click six and then it'll always be at least a 10 for close combat which is solid and he'll always be doing at least four damage close combat so that's really good and he has probability control to help you reroll his attacks to help out with his low-ish values but again they're really not even that low and then his special speed power is unrelenting vengeance three place atrocitus adjacent to an opposing character that since your last turn damaged atrocitus or ko'd a friendly character it's really good they could KO from the character anywhere on the map, right? Like Sky Tower runs up, KO somebody, KO somebody else, charges back two squares, and then he can just be, be placed all the way across the map and punch him, which is really solid. So I like that a lot. He can obviously, of course, get the Red Lantern Ring for free. He won't get it, uh, his penetrating poison, until he gets to that power, which is kind of cool. So he can teleport. I don't, he can't teleport over. You can't be placed and then poison, but... He can still do that, be the thick of it, poison next turn. He can also, you know, drop chainsaws, etc. when he himself is already a 12 for 5 top dial at close. So, I like this Atrocitus. He kind of does what you want an Atrocitus to do. He's the big, beefiest Red Lantern we have in Modern right now. He hits really hard, stops healing, stops, stop clicks. It's really solid. I think it's really fun. Now, the only bad thing is I got to get my hands on one. So, if you if you got one, you want to yeah. let him go for a decent price, <laughs> let me know, because... Decent prices are not what this set has been so far. If you've looked at Facebook or eBay, it is high dollar. Yikes, yeah. it is wild. Just That's Trocitus. I think he's a ton of fun. For a ton right now. Oh, these cards are insane. Oh, my gosh. Um, yeah. Yeah, I do wish it was the War of Light. Uh, uh, so do I. That is the one that I own. But yep, Same here. Yes. Uh, next up, it is a figure I own. It's the Super Rare from World's Finest, the Chief. The whole... Uh, Niles Cauldron is what everyone's been saying. Oh, that you've cut, cut me deep. Yeah. Cut me deep just what now. What a good joke I just made. Uh, Niles Calder, he is the leader of the Boom the, the, the Doom Patrol. <laughs> the Boom Dude. The Boom Patrol. <laughs> the uh, Boom Patrol, this guy. Yeah, they patrol for booms. Uh, yeah, the leader of the Doom Patrol, he's the one that secretly manufactured their accidents, which happens to be the name of his trait. When establishing theme teams, choose a character with the celebrity keyword, a character with the robot keyword, and or a character with the soldier keyword. Chosen character gain the Doom Patrol keyword and have outsider's team ability this game, which is not, like, that's just nuts. Giving uh, potentially three characters outsiders, plus he has outsiders himself, all for four po 40 points. Pretty cool. Um... And then he's got some other things that work with the keyword, although personally I don't think it's the best, uh, so we'll get into it. He has a special speed power for his first two clicks, a special damage power for his first two clicks, and a special defense power all four clicks. So the speed power is power, choose an adjacent friendly character with the Doom Patrol keyword and move them up to five squares. That's not bad, it's just like it's one square less than TK. So that's the only reason why it's not like super amazing is because it's essentially tk but it's five squares um yeah i guess they could carry somebody or something uh, special defense okay. is mastermind when the chief uses it he may choose a friendly character within four squares in line of fire that he shares a keyword with those keywords being doom patrol and scientist uh then his special damage powers first two clicks is leadership when the chief uses and succeeds this turn when a friendly character uses the outsider's team ability to target themselves they have safeguard outwit until your next turn which is a fun cheeky way to get uh essentially like cosmic energy you know protected outwit. oh yeah um it does potentially hurt any like big heavy hitters like uh someone with the celebrity keyword that doesn't want outsiders themselves is sakarian iron man um most characters have like some sort of stat boosting ability 
uh, if they're like one of the big attackers and you don't want to outsiders yourself when you're doing boost to your attack and damage. Uh, his last two clicks, he has four speed with stealth, 11 attack, 15 defense with that special defense, and then instead of that special damage power, he gets two clicks of support, uh, zero range, one lightning bolt. It's fairly interesting, but only because, for me, it's only because uh, he introduces outsiders to three characters that probably didn't already have it, and he's keyword cheating for a keyword that I never thought we would get keyword cheating. <laughs> so yeah, you can just create some new Doom Patrol by uh, manufacturing their accidents, and that's that's fun. It's very in line with the character. Yeah, I like it a lot. I think it's again, I said the same thing about Beast Boy. I want there to be more DC keyword cheating slash, you know, something make more DC teams with their named keywords you know and this guy brings it in and i kind of like this this way of making a team more i think it kind of fits like our whole tinker taylor soldier spy esque thing right where it's like celebrity soldier yeah it, robot yeah celebrity soldier robot so it's really cool it's very specific not necessarily keyword cheating like you said but he's one of my favorite things to do in the game is build teams and he makes building teams really fun he makes me just want to build teams around it so I like that. I like any figure that makes me have fun building a team versus have a headache build a team. X Men swap, <laughs> um, you know. So, yeah, a, a fun way to build a team and a generic right. keyword. But yeah. if you build with a full team of all of those, then you still have a themed team. Be fun. Themed Dig teams it. give you. <laughs> oh, jeez! Stop! Plus three stop! <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> ah, no! Ah. Uh. Uh, that's a joke. No one gets except Calder. We should do. We should just do that. Have for an hour <laughs> just monologue that for the next monologue that for the next yeah oh gosh uh next up is batman beyond this is the super air from justice league unlimited getting a legacy card old terry mcginnis here he's got improved targeting in north Indian train he's got six range two targets he could freaking fly running shot two clicks charge for one sidestep for two flurry for two special attack for his first three precision strike on those next two and a special back on his last two Vulnerability for two clicks, toughness for two clicks, combat reflexes for three, special damage power for his first three, close combat expert for the middle two, and then the last two he gets that special again. Armor, Batman Family, Detective, Future, Gotham City, Justice League, Martial Artist, Project Cadmus, enough keywords, good, thank the Lord. He's got a trait called Thanks for the Warning. Super Senses, when Batman Beyond uses it, increase the result by plus one if the attacker was targeted without wit since your last turn, which is handy dandy because his special damage power says outwit. When Batman uses it, if he occupies hindering terrain, he may use it regardless of line of fire. So, but regardless of line of fire, pretty cool. And then his special attack power is Shue, which I don't remember this at all, but I haven't watched much Batman Beyond, so I, think I guess Shue that makes was sense. Just their, it was just one of their... Uh... Gosh, what do you call it? Like their lingo or whatever. Oh, lingo. Like yeah, it was like uh, no cap, whatever you call that stuff. Uh, oh, geez. How the, how the yeah, children sure. talk. Yeah, the lingo, the shorthand, yeah. the whatever. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Shwe. AO Shwe with me. Precision strike. Three, you make an attack, but only to target opposing characters that have been targeted without wit this turn. Eight characters are dealt a maximum of one damage. So he can outwit somebody. Boom. Make a free attack. He can also, boom, do a costed attack. So he can pump out an easy four damage. This turn, they take a max of one damage. That's okay. Homeboy's got precision strike. It's shui. I don't get it. I don't get it, but okay. Yeah. Super senses. Um, and then, of course, you cruise roll by plus one. So you might have 50 50 senses if that character you target with outwit, you know, attacks you. Or if you have a bunch of outwit on your team, you can outwit them and you can really help Terry stay alive. Again, I do miss the big boom tube ability he used to have. Right. I don't think this is necessarily worse, but it seems like such a side, like a lateral move, you know? It's, it's a, cool. It's a different it's character, but it's also... So it's much weaker, but it's also way cheaper. Yeah, um, that's true. It is a lot cheaper. I think he was like, what, 125, 100 something? Yeah. Or now he's 75 or 50. Uh, the 50 point line does start on his like one click of charge makes him just more close combat orientated it's it's solid but it's kind of a like a lot of legacy cards feel like okay this is now the character's new normal card i will only ever use this legacy card and this is more of a play it this way it's cheaper it does a different thing but if you if you want to play it the other way always have this option but i think more so with this guy it's like 
this is not a straight upgrade. It's like, well, I may just still want to play that figure the old way. So in Silver Age, you might just not even use the Legacy card and be like, well, I'm playing, I'm playing him the normal release, you know, instead of the Legacy card, right. which is fine. But it just, yeah, it's not it's just different is all. Yeah, it's not wrong. It's not bad. It's just, it's different. Right. It's like a, a new character, which is wild because, like, the stat lines are obviously the same. Powers on the cards are the same. It's just got a new uh, trait, attack, and damage power. But yeah, I do like him. The only thing that I dislike about this design is the amount of times where I've built like a, a team or like played with a figure that relies heavily on using outwit, and then I end up yeah. playing like against a bunch of teams that have protected outwit, and so I just can't do any of the cool stuff I want to do. Like the night Simeon builds his outwit team is like everybody's like, I think I'm gonna play a cosmic energy team. Yeah. What if I just sort by uh, team ability? Yeah. Yeah. All That's right. That's how it feels. All right. Yeah. Next up, I was excited for these guys. It's How Jordan and Sinestro. Uh, this is the super rare from War of the Light. Uh, I don't know why I said like the War of the Light. War of Light. Um, they come War in at light. 175 or 75 points. Uh, 11 clicks long. Big beefy dial. Their 175 point line starts with a special speed power, special attack power a 19 impervious, and a 4 damage perplex. Uh, That special speed power is hypersonic speed. When Hal Jordan and Sinestro use it, after resolutions, they may make an attack. So it's basically like a flurry hypersonic, or a hit somebody over here, finish my hypersonic, hit somebody else. Um, Their special attack power is Hal Jordan and Sinestro can use the displayed standard attack and displayed standard damage powers of adjacent characters, which is just good that's really good. They have the Green Lantern Core team ability, so if you're carrying people, uh, you get all the standard attack and damage powers of adjacent people, even opposing people. Um, yeah, they keep that special speed power for their first three clicks with 10 speed, and they've, of course, got flight with 10 range, 2 lightning bolts. Uh, on click 4 through 6, it goes to normal running shot. And on click four, they still have that special attack power that lets them copy powers, but then they go to just regular energy explosion on click five, which happens to be their 75 point line starting line. Or no, that's sorry, click six uh, happens to be there, but it's still, it's the same stat line. It's just uh, they don't have outwit. So their damage power goes perplex, outwit, perplex, outwit, outwit, and then they don't have a damage power until click 11. But it's four damage from click one until click six. So that 75 point line, you're in 11 for four, which is pretty solid. Goes down to three damage from click seven to, well, 11. Um, But you do get perplexed back on click 11. Uh, They've got a lot of stuff going on. But yeah, if you look at their dial, it's fairly simple. Impervious first three clicks goes to invulnerability from click four through seven. Uh, ESD from click eight to 11. And they lose movement or movement attack on click seven and nine. Otherwise, they always have movement attack. They always have hypersonic or running shot. Uh, they get running shot back on click 10 and 11, along with some pulse wave, which is fun. But yeah, pretty solid, pretty solid dial. Uh, their traits are, I don't think we've gone over the split kind of trait thing yet, but um, all the duo figures have a version of this. So when Hal Jordan and Sinestro is KO'd by an attack, before removing them from the game, you may generate a character named Hal Jordan and or a character named Sinestro from your sideline on their last non-KO click, then heal them each two clicks. The total points of the generated characters must be equal to or less than Hal Jordan and Sinestro's point value. If Hal Jordan and Sinestro is 75 points, only generate one of the two characters instead, which is probably what you're going to do at 75 points anyhow. Otherwise, yeah. you're splitting. You're looking for like a fifty and twenty-five point character. Um, no, you cannot use Green Lantern. You have to use. Can't be like real name Hal Jordan. You have to use right. a character named Hal Jordan, which has only ever been one character. Uh, maybe no. I think there's two. There's one from like a movie set or something. Um, but yeah. yeah. The the chase from Wonder Woman 80th, and then. Super rare, or the chase from Wonder Woman eighty uh, Sinestro. So like, yeah, the su- you yeah. use super rare Sinestro from this set, and then or the chase Sinestro from right. Wonder Woman. 
I like the idea, though, that their top is 175, and then this Sinestro is what? He's 125, right? And then that Hal is 50, so you could do Green Lantern, Hal, and Sinestro, and then you turn them into Yellow Lantern, Hal, and Sinestro. I just think that's that's really funny. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, 125, so yeah, it works out perfectly to uh, to do all that. I think it's hilarious. Man, I didn't even think about that. That's that's pretty good. Uh, pretty solid. Um, their second trait, uh, so yeah, like they, if they're KO'd, your opponent does score the points, you just get to pop out some more people to keep the fight going. Um, their second trait is, do I constantly have to watch over you? Willpower, when an opposing character would use Outwit, Perplex, or Probability Control to target Hal and Sinestro, or an adjacent friendly character, roll a d6 on a 3 through 6, that power has no effect. This is like my favorite part about them. This is why I heavily consider playing them at 75 points, because uh, they've got the Green Lantern team ability, so you're carrying, potentially carrying people with them. And then on a 3 through 6, opposing characters that would use Outwit, Prob, or Perplex to target Hal or adjacent characters, adjacent friendly characters don't get to do that like it has no effect uh that's pretty wild because it's not something you can outwit it's a trait that's not attached to like any kind of power or anything uh it's just yeah try and outwit perplex or prob me or my friends uh yeah don't speak to me or my child again kind of thing (laughs) but yeah it's a three through six it's uh faust level's good it's actually probably better than the wonder woman faust um at least in my opinion because it covers more powers I think, I think his yeah. was prob and outwit. I don't remember. Um, is, yeah, perplex prob outwit. Yeah. So yeah. they do have the Green Lantern core keyword, Herald, New Guardians, Police, and Sinestro core keywords. So you can obviously play them with the Green Lantern ring. They have traded uh, willpower, so they'd also have that plus one to all those willpower rolls. Or you can play them with the Sinestro core ring and get that perplex going. They do have you know a few clicks of perplex throughout there so maybe that also works out but yeah i think it's a really solid legacy card i think it's insane that we have a 10 range two lightning bolt 11 for four for 75 points that's going to outrange yeah. most things in modern not everything but most it is kind of gnarly when you think about it like bang i like this i like this Alan sinestro a lot i am of course Kind of super bummed because, well, yeah, you guessed it. I totally owned one of these forever ago and struggled, struggled for years and years and years to like sell it and get rid of it because I didn't want it because it was kind of unusable back then being a 300 point figure. Yeah. Now, of course, it's a legacy card and I should have just kept it instead of selling it for like $3 or whatever I ended up doing. But that's okay. You live and you learn. Didn't know legacy cards were even going to exist back then. So, next up got batman this is a real bob kane bill fingery the first and say like that uh the first kind of version of batman i forget which one made this more look as opposed to the classic batman i'm not a bat fan sorry folks uh but this one is like purple gloves pointy ears uses guns very odd not quite the batman we know today i do know this style of batman is used a lot this is just that's his first ever costume they reference it a lot in the brave and the bold animated show which is cool 50 points batman ally justice society all-star squadron batman family detective gotham city justice society keywords he has rooftop to rooftop as a trait free if batman has no action tokens and occupies elevated terrain move him up to his speed value if Batman has stealth displayed on his dial and occupies elevated terrain, opposing characters can't draw lines of fire to him. So you guessed it, on his first two clicks he has stealth, but he also does have just Batman ally. So that's why there's kind of a specified version of it. I'm curious as to why this Batman must not have originally had like Batman ally at the time and just had stealth. Maybe because he was the very first, first-ish version of Batman, I suppose. Yeah, yeah so he can't be targeted at all. Lines of fire can't be drawn to him, period, if he's on elevated terrain while he's on his first two clicks, which is really cool. He has special damage power uh, on his last two clicks, which is I used guns once. Range combat expert, range value of six with two targets, so that makes him a N for three down dial at range with uh, six range, two targets. Interesting. So his power set goes as follows. Like I said, two clicks of stealth, then he has two clicks of What's it called? Smoke Cloud. Four clicks of Combat Reflex's top dial, and then two clicks of Perplex. Next two clicks, he's got Charge with Blades. 
an exploit on those two clicks. And then last, he has that smoke cloud again for two clicks and willpower for two clicks with his special damage power. It's a okay, solid 50 points. I think potentially in silver, a call-in battery with the whole campy line oh, of yeah. fire drawn to him. And then yeah. he's got that nice combat reflexes. But again, he's just kind of a 50-point dude. I think you mostly just want to play this guy if you want to see this sculpt again. It is a really cool sculpt. It's him, like, coking out this guy as he's swinging through the city. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. It's really cool. It's a dangerous way to carry somebody. It is. Did, but... I think he asked him how much he weighed before he did this. Yeah, he really should have. <laughs> hey, man, how much uh, do you weigh? I'm only going to use one arm to carry you. So yeah. uh, It's funny that, like, the original dial had the transporter uh, symbol. Oh. It was like the boot transporter. And it looks, I mean, according to this information, it looks like they're going to give him flight. So. Okay, right on. Yeah. Makes sense. At least kind of swinging. Know, they don't have flying. to, by giving him the flight instead of uh, boot, they at least don't have to add all the like improved movements that Wait, he can they still carry. Have. And it's nice. Yeah. Next up, it's another duo. It's Harley and Ivy from the. Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls set. Uh, this is a duo that I've had. I think I still have. Uh, it has one point value, unlike most of the others that we'll see. Or unlike, yeah, all the others that we'll see. Uh, it's 75 points. Full stop. Uh, six range, two lightning bolts. There is a special speed power on the first two and the last two clicks. Special attack power on the first three and last two clicks. And then... A weird middle zone of click three through six where there's a special damage power and it almost doesn't line up with any of the other special powers uh, but yeah so they've got the uh, batman enemy and team player team abilities uh arkham asylum gotham city sirens gotham city underworld scientist and suicide squad keywords they have a singular trait which is again the when they're ko'd you can uh, bring in a character named Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn, and or either of those from your sideline on the last non-KO clicks, then heal them each two clicks. Total points can't be higher than the 75 point, obviously. Um, combined can't be higher. Their special speed power on their first two clicks is Charge, Flurry, and Stealth, which is pretty solid. Special attack power that goes along with that is Sorry Fellows, You're Not Our Type. Poison Smoke Cloud. Smoke Cloud is free, but only to generate two markers. Friendly characters within range have Safeguard Poison, which isn't like something I'm usually worried about, but it is funny. I think they'll ever do that with like other attack powers, like Safeguard Quake. Safeguard uh, Flurry. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, the, they've got that special Charge Flurry Stealth power with that Smoke Cloud Poison um, etc. power, and then seven or 18 super senses for the first two clicks, and three damage with perplex. Uh, click three through six, they go to sidestep. They keep that special attack power for click three, but then it goes to 10 attack with precision strike for the next three clicks. Uh, click three through six, they also get combat reflexes instead of super senses with a 17 defense, so not too bad. Uh, definitely want to give them stealth in some way on those clicks because they lose it from their special power and then they this is the only clicks that they have the special damage on and that is when harley and ivy attacks modify attack and damage plus one for each action token on all targets which is pretty decent that means uh at least the first click where this is revealed you could have a 12 for five and then most of the clicks it's going to be like a 12 for four is going to be like the cap out Last two clicks, you go back to that charge, flurry, stealth, uh, the special attack power that's poison smoke cloud and stuff. Um, you get a 17 super senses and then an 18 super senses. And then three damage outwit. And then the last click is four damage outwit. I think this character, I, I mean, I like it. I think for 75 points, it's a little squishy. But I do like the outwit, or not the outwit, the charge flurry stealth combo with the uh poison smoke cloud stuff so you're always going to be able to smoke cloud by generating two markers and then i think this gives you some of the better options for things to bring in not better but like you have a lot more options than you do for um hal and sinestro at least oh yeah definitely i mean we talked a little bit earlier about how both the uh harley quinn and ivy in the main set work so well with this figure yeah 
Yeah. And it's a it was a character that wasn't great at the time, so it was probably easy to pick up. I don't know if it's still going to be easy to pick up. I'm pretty sure I had one. I don't know. I need to check and see which ones I have. But yeah. yeah. The next figure, I've already talked about it once because I was really excited when it finally came out. It's the Lex Luthor and Joker duo. One of the only freaking figures I actually own from this batch of legacy cards. It's awesome. I love this figure. 150 points top dial or 50 points at lower. So they did trim quite a bit of point fat off of them before. They have seven range, one target. Batman enemy, Superman enemy team abilities. No special combat symbols or whatever. These guys, they be walking. Lex Luthor just got no power armor to help them uh, fly around or anything. Gotham City Underworld, Injustice League, Legion of Doom, and Metropolis. Real name, Lex Luthor, and unknown, even though we know it's Jack Oswald or, like, whatever, I think. Something like that. I don't know. Uh, got a couple of traits. Got a speed power. Got a damage power. So they have the whole trait, just like Hal and Sinestro, that whenever they're KO'd, you place them on their last non-KO clicks. Them too. I believe it's the same. And then it's protective pulse wave. If Lex Luthor and Joker is 50 points, you only make one of them instead of both. At 150, I don't know if there's a big point line, like 100 point Joker, but definitely making our boy Red Sun Lex when these guys bite the dust because that's just an insanely good combo. Also, the main set Joker, I think, for 50 is solid, but you know, you're kind of losing out on 50 points there. Not a big deal. I think it works, works well. Yeah. Second trait won't lay a finger on me. Braided Mastermind the entire time. Dope. Love it. If there are no opposing characters than range and line of fire that have Batman ally or Superman ally, Lex Luthor and the Joker have Safeguard Outwit, which is really cool. One thing to note is like a Teen Titans team, and they can use it because of Batgirl or Supergirl, or excuse me, Power Girl. Just because they can use it because of them doesn't mean they actually have it. So Teen Titans that can use it but don't have it, Lex Luthor and Joker are still fine, but once Batgirl or Power Girl actually get within a range of these guys or line of fire that's when they can no longer have a safeguard out with so fun thing to note just fun thing about how team abilities work versus possess and can use very fun very cool their special speed power is only on their first two clicks their 150 point line and that is money talks You're darn right it does side step when an adjacent friendly character is given a mover power action resolutions you may place Lex Luthor and the Joker adjacent to that character if you did once per turn after resolutions they may make an attack so they can get chauffeured around by anybody move or power so they could power action to running shot and then Lex Luthor and Joker will just follow them and they'll be able to take a shot same thing power action to charge if it's like a sky tyrant who can charge crazy far or a flash etc they can just go with you make an attack and then afterwards because it's only a place not like a carry or anything you can also make another attack or again if it's just a move move them all the way across the map whatever they can make an attack and then they can cost it make an attack and while they're doing that they will be an 11 for four potentially with insane stat modifiers who knows but the max they could be is a 14 for seven just saying sounds pretty good to me but that is again 150 points of your build to make two attacks after probably moving all the way across the map which is baller they have insane brilliance which is their per- special power on their first two clicks and their last click but may instead modify combat value plus two or minus two and adjacent friendly characters has superman enemy which is super helpful because again superman enemy is this thing where if you're adjacent to a friendly character and you're a higher point value than them and they have superman enemy you can use outwit really cool it's a very wonky team ability but it basically gives them a use of outwit they also now have a use of their double negative perplex or a double positive perplex and they have pensai Mastermind is helpful because they have no damage reducer until they have three clicks of toughness on their lower dial. They have Penetrate, Psychic Blast, and ESD top dial, followed by two clicks of Charge, Blades, Combat Reflexes, and Exploit Weakness, which is really good. Then they have Sidestep, Poison, Toughness, and two clicks of Probability Control on clicks five and six down dial. There are a lot of points. I really like what they do. I really want to build teams around these guys. They're a lot of fun. If you want to play yeah. them at 50, you totally can. Uh, it's an easy way to get maybe just like that Red Sun Lex to pop off at 50, and they're just a little sidestep prob piece. They lose a lot of their stuff that makes them really cool, but it's still something you can do. But I like them a lot. The synergy with giving out Superman enemy is really helpful, or uh, you know, making sure that actually pops off because they're again, we got a Batman set, we got a Wonder Woman set, not a lot of Superman enemy floating around you know so that's really helpful so i dig i really dig these guys a lot i think yeah i think it's almost if played at 50 obviously like 
prob like your opponent's probably playing this at 50 with that uh red sun lex i think you almost have to just ignore it which is hard because it's an 11 for three and it's got poison and stuff but like the turn where that lex comes out is a really rough follow-up like yeah. the next turn they're they've got a lot of stuff i mean also just the uh what does his last click do again um like oh, that removes, damage power yeah it removes like team ability or something uh no it's perplexed you can modify a combat value by plus two or minus oh you mean oh, red that sun lex red sun lex yeah. yeah he chooses somebody that has a you choose one character and then they cannot target lex with an attack until oh, he's for the, unless yeah. they are the only character on your force for the rest of the game like so that. he starts with that then gets both by standard yeah it's nasty yeah it's really strong all right the counter Whoa. to that last uh, model superman yeah the counter to the uh the lex and joker not counter but the foil i guess uh world's finest also from the set world's finest i love that little factoid um seven range one lightning bolt they have a 175 125 and 60 point line uh they that's like something that we should mention is like most of these characters had a special symbol back in the day which was multi-attack or duo attack none of them have that anymore that's been a retired game element for a while so it is fun that they kind of worked that in with this one though um so at 175 points you have 10 clicks of life you have a starting line of two clicks of hypersonic 12 attack so 11 speed 12 attack with super strength uh, invincible with a 19 and 18 and then four the four first geez the first four clicks you have five damage which is pretty good it's not crazy for 175 but it's pretty solid on click three through five you get running shot instead of hypersonic uh you go f down to an 11 attack from clicks three through seven with no attack power um keep invincible on click three with an 18 go to 18 impervious from clicks four through seven and then three clicks last three clicks i guess are uniform you have uh charge super strength uh special defense power and close combat expert with uh click eight being an 11 for four and then click nine and ten being a 10 for three but yeah their 175 point line is pretty solid uh what's better in my opinion is the 125 point line which is that starts on click four it's an 11 speed running shot 11 attack 18 defense impervious still five damage seven range so for 50 points less you miss out on three clicks or yeah 50 points less you miss out on three clicks but i think the ability to uh make some solid range attacks is pretty great um and then yeah put the, more on your team and everything to help them out yeah you get a lot more for 50 points you could get a lot of like enhancement and shield team ability or something i don't know whatever last three clicks are the 60 point line so that's again the charge super strength close combat expert and that special defense power which is combat reflexes invincible super senses but increase the result by plus one for each action token on world's finest protected outwit so yeah it's pretty solid you could equip them with, uh, I think it's the Wonder Woman bracelets or something to oh, yeah. increase that result even higher. Um, but yeah, I think for 60 points, this is the line that I'm most interested at playing them at if I ever get this card. Because right now it's going for like 80, 90 bucks. Um, yeah. But if I ever get this card, uh, I would definitely think about playing them at 60. Uh, because yeah, Combat Reflex is invincible. They start with an 18. They're also a 12 for 5 with that close combat expert. Um, it's just pretty pretty decent. They also have that uh, go. I can take it from here when World's Finest is KO'd trait. So when they're KO'd, obviously, um, if they, let's see. Yeah, you have a sideline Superman, Batman. Put them on their last non-KO click. Heal them each two clicks. Uh, the total points of the generated characters must be equal or less than their world's finest point value if they were 60 points you only generate one of the two characters instead which is how the other ones worked i was wondering if maybe at the 175 point line they have any better like effect but no it's yeah. you just get to bring in two characters up to 175 points i guess uh they have the dark knight and big blue boy big blue boy is that what they oh boy scout jeez i missed yeah, i would hope they have the like, word 
I was like, huh, I've never heard Superman called he's the just, big, uh, he's blue just big Blue Boy. He's you know, a big blue boy. Um, like uh, Babe, the big blue ox. But uh, that trait is free. Make an attack, but only to target an opposing character that, since their last turn, made an attack or used outwit. So that's kind of a way to do that duo attack they used to have. Uh, their third trait is think long and hard before you do something you might regret. When world's finest would take damage from an effect of an opposing character of equal or less points than them, roll a d6. On a 4 through 6, they take a max of 1 damage from that effect. Which, that is the one regrettable point about like the 60 point line. Uh, yeah, and that still protects lower. them from like a sky tyrant or, you know, there's a lot of like 50 point characters True. that uh, are like main attackers. So, yeah. But playing them at like 175, it does give them quite a bit of extra reduce, reduction, damage reduction. Um, yeah, I think it's a really fun piece. I don't, I don't know if it's a, I'll pay ninety dollars for the legacy card kind of figure, but it is a really fun piece. I remember playing with it and against it quite a bit. Obviously, they have the Batman Ally, Superman Ally team abilities. Batman Family, Detective Gotham City, Justice League, Kryptonian, Metropolis, Reporter, and Trinity keywords. Um, yeah, but that's all world's finest doing the uh, the thing they do. Right on. To finish us off this legacy car journey we're going down and to cap off the set review, we have Green Lantern. Yes, that one. You guessed it. Alan Scott, the most famous Green Lantern of all. Yeah, so we have Kingdom Come, Alan Scott, Green Lantern. I've played against this figure a few times. I used to have a buddy that loved playing him, and it was like, you know, eight, nine years ago when we would play a lot, so it was actually pretty tough to crack his 20 defense willpower, and yeah. he had a deep dial, you know, 10 clicks of life. So now we add to it, we update it for a modern world. He's got 10 range, 2 targets. 175 points, Justice Society, and Kingdom Come team abilities. Kingdom Come is like super senses, but only ranged attacks. Is that right? I'm pretty yeah, sure. It's a five, something. Six yeah. for range, yeah. Okay, it's but not it's not necessarily super, super senses, senses, so, so it, yeah, it doesn't, be to strike it, but... doesn't affect it. Right. Yeah, that's true. Super, precision um, strike and outwit can't get rid right. of it. Uh, so one trait at 175. We'll get to the 20-point line here because it's a little funky. Uh, so first off, armor, future, Gotham City, Green Lantern Corps, Errol, Justice League, Justice Society, Mystical, and Politician. Ton of keywords. Uh, running shot, first two clicks, and then running shot randomly on clicks seven and eight. Like we said, it's an old figure, guys. K for the first four clicks, willpower for the first eight, and then defend on the last two, and then range combat expert on the first six. He's a 10, 12, 20 for damage. So he's a 13 for five at range with a 15 square reach all on his own. Pretty insane. First trait, Emerald Armor and Blade. Only trait. Invincible, period. So now, 20 defense, willpower. You're like, oh man, he's got no reducer. Now it kind of makes a little bit more sense. He's got this big knight armor look, and he's got this big sword. And it's like, you know what would make sense? Probably if he had traded Invincible. So, then he has free. Choose one for Green Lantern to use until you choose again. The first little combo is Charge Blades. Again, makes sense. His sculpt has a giant freaking sword in it. Now, at any point in time in his dial, he'll always have move and attack, and he can always do potentially six damage, you know, on his down dial where he's got a little, little two damage, a little three damage there. You know, maybe he loses running shot. He's already in the fray. He can charge up, charge blades. Pretty solid. His second is super senses, and then barrier is free, but only to generate two markers. The big thing about this Green Lantern in Kingdom Come is he was just kind of in his emerald palace in space there. Right. Giant. Uh, and kind of chilling. So barrier super senses being a, a heavy defense tank makes a lot of sense. So now he's got a 20 defense invincible with super senses, barriers free, make two markers. Really cool, really strong. I think it'll give people a lot of nostalgia and get to play a really cool figure with a freaking awesome sculpt again, which is also just really cool. So that's really fun. And then if you want to play him on this kind of supporty character role instead, at 20 points, he has Owen Ambassador to the UN. It's his last two clicks where he's like a 17 defense, 16 defense with defend and like nothing else. Seven speed, seven attack, two damage on those clicks. It's in leadership. When Green Lantern uses defend or leadership or uh, defend, when he uses defend, leadership, or he considers a friendly character. No, I don't know why or is there. That's weird. He considers friendly characters in range and line of fire to be adjacent. Always give out a 17 defend within 10 squares in line of fire. And he can always roll leadership within 10 squares in line of fire. 
or adjacent. Kind of insane. Oh, it's supposed Once to be per for the uh, JSA team ability. Oh, okay. It's just not there. Gotcha. Yeah, so or JSA reason, team ability. Code in. Oh, great job, Joe. <laughs> Get a load of this guy. We should have used HC Realms. I'm uh, just kidding. They literally don't even have it up. Once per turn, when a friendly character within range is targeted by an attack, a roll d d6. If you do, the character positively modifies their defense value equal to half the result for the attack. Again, within range. And freaking range. It could give you potentially a plus three defense. Once per turn, but it's really solid. At minimum, it's a plus one. You know what I mean? It's like, that's just, it's just dope. I really dig it, so... Yep. That is, uh, that's old Green Lantern here, and that is the legacy cards for this set. We're not going to get into uh, any of the mystery things or the equipment or whatever, but overall, I really like this set. When I first saw the set list, as we were starting to see stuff go come through the cracks and everything, I was like, maybe this set's kind of bad, you know? I was expecting a really lantern-heavy set, and even though it's not a lantern-heavy set like I wanted it to be... It's still a really, really fun set. I had a great time playing Sealed. Uh, we played, you know, a BR. We opened those, you know, boosters from Kevin. We played Sealed at Rainbow, which was a ton of fun. There's great team building aspects in this set. I you know I know it's super early, but, like, this could easily be one of the best sets of the year already. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really loving it. Yeah. Uh, especially since it, it was, like, almost... Well, it was over a full year. Um, yeah. But, no, uh, I think... Uh, Rebirth was like pretty terrible DC set in my opinion. Like just there was like some team building, but like the functionality was all over the place. JLU was like a lot better, but I still maybe it was just because I didn't care about like the sub themes. Um, Wonder Woman 80th was great; it was awesome. And yeah. then this set just has such like awesome functionality between the uh, the sub themes. You know, whether you're playing like Injustice League or you're playing Teen Titans. Or um, Gotham City Underworld is, like, another one that just gives out, like, a ton of cool stuff. Yeah, I really like it. I think it's a solid set. Uh, I don't think I need the chases, but it is awesome that they're including constructs in every booster. So I'm definitely going to pick up, like, the ones that I want. Hopefully those will, like, drop in price or maybe they'll keep up in price and I'll be able to sell one thing out of every booster I open for like minimum five bucks or something. But yeah, also getting new rings is cool. Rings that do more than, well, I don't even remember what the old rings did. Give you the keyword, I think was all they did. Something like that. Yeah. They just, they gave you the keyword and they, they would give you a little effect. Now they've made the effect like totally different. So, right. So, yeah. well, not totally different, all of them, but very, very different. So, yeah. yeah. I'm excited for the set. I'm going to get it. some more than what I've already gotten, which is two boosters so far. Just, yeah, I mean, I went from, like, not wanting to get, a like, a brick or a case, and I'm probably going to pick up a brick just so I can make sure I get, like, my full set of, like, Titans, get a lot of Scooby-Doo figures, get some constructs to hopefully trade and, you know, get the constructs that I, I really want, you know? Like, there's a lot of value in this set and a lot of great stuff in the commons and uncommons, so I'm pumped. I think a cur of this set is super worth it. If you like yeah. the Teen Titans, like the Teen Titans just make such a great budget team. Uh, the Scooby Gang are such a great team. The Batman, all the good like Batman villains and all that synergy is in the commons, on commons rares. I think a, getting a curve this set would be a really good idea. Yeah, I do want to flesh out like the, um, especially the Gotham City like underworld. But like, yeah, I need, sure. I need Killer Croc, Mister um, Freeze. Uh, I'd like to get the Brain, even though I don't have all the stuff that works with him. Um, yeah, like Scarecrow, both, both versions of Scarecrow. There's a lot of, yeah, CUR is it's pretty packed. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, that will finish off our set review, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you didn't mind it being split in parts. I think that maybe made it a little easier uh, for you guys to digest since we kind of spent a real long time talking about the commons, uncommons, and rares. But like we said, they were stacked. They were super fun, and they were great, so yeah. And uh, this set is going to officially release, uh, I believe, it's next week, or maybe it's right after next week. I mean, double. It was this guy. week. Is it not January fifth or fourth? It, it very well could be fourth uh, uh, yes. or eleventh. Yeah, I think it's fourth. Um, well, cool stuff has it as the eleventh, so we'll hold off till then to give you the updated single prices. Uh, 
but yeah, you can still get your quote unquote uh, pre-release purchases and at uh, Cool Stuff Inc. So they still have cases, bricks, and booster packs. They don't have any Dyson tokens, uh, the starter set, or the play at home kit listed anymore. So I think those are completely sold out. But yeah, it's not too late to pick up some of this before it gets officially released. Uh, get it started, shipped out, whatever, to you. And make sure you use code DIAL5 when you do that. But yeah, we're sponsored by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including this Batman team upset. So check them out, CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails. 